Good evening, everybody. Welcome to D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined by Brandon, Brandon, and Justin. Hey. Yeah, buddy. Hey, everybody. How What's you guys up? doing today? Phenomenal. Still waking up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty good. And Great. today Great. we're going to be debating who is the best Batman. There is no debate. Yes. There is no debate. We all know who it is. Yeah, I, think, I think there is. Yeah, I'm I'm with him on that one. I think there's a debate. Yes, I'm coming after yeah. you for this one, Brandon. Just remember that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, I think we'll start this episode by listing our top three favorite Batman actors. Batman. Live think- action. We're going to be covering live action and animated too. So, just letting you know. This was really hard to put together, <laughs> to tell you the I truth. Know, right? like, um, well, one is easy, <laughs> but I won't say that yet. Um, who wants to go first? <laughs> yeah, whoever yeah, wants I'll to go, go first. first. All right. I'll go Justin. first. So are we doing like live action separated or are we doing it all together? Nope. All together. All together. All together. All right. So number one, of course, you know, Kevin Conroy. That's the, uh, you know, once you've been doing it for 20 years, that's that's the guy right there. Yeah. And um, number two, I got Ben Affleck. Yeah. And then number three, it's kind of a dark horse here, but Will Friedle, Batman Ooh. Beyond. I Ooh. love that last that choice, dude. I mean, Batman Beyond is, uh, pff, gosh, the best That's sequel you could ever do to Batman. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, it's even the movie, the movie, oh, the Return of everything the about it. Yeah, so I can't. It's like flawless to tell you the truth. It's too perfect, you know, like. Yeah. I, I can't get enough it's, of that. You know, it gives you Twist the feel is of genuinely animated. And, yeah, because like as a kid, like, like when you're growing up at that time, like everyone's favorite person was Nightwing, and then just replacing Nightwing with a cooler Batman, you know, like it just yeah. Was perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. So guys, no Batman. <laughs> All right, so who's next? You, Danny. Yeah, you, Danny. Okay. You're out for blood. So go. I, right. I'm going to say my number one is, yeah, I'm going to, I'll go Michael Keaton, then Kevin Conroy, and third, I would say, I'd have to say Ben Affleck. Mm. You're into this, dude. Good choice. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say Conroy first, but I mean Keaton's lips. I mean, how could you compete? With <laughs> lips? Got this we're talking excessive lips. Yeah. If we're talking lips, then Val Kilmer yeah. lips. Yeah, <laughs> Val Kilmer just uh, killed it. The, the Val Kilmer lips I couldn't do because like he can't breathe out of that cow. So like his mouth <laughs> he's is always got his the whole up. movie. He's just like, <sighs> yeah, the whole time he's <laughs> sweating, <and> breathing. <laughs> oh God. Uh, hey man, he did it so he could change his voice. Man. Yeah, yeah, it worked I, apparently. <laughs> I think that's like a big critical factor in a Batman is distinguishing Bruce Wayne from Batman. And you know, Kevin mm. Conroy does such a phenomenal job. And there's a scene where he's talking to Gordon in the Batcave in the bat suit, and Gordon is calling for Bruce Wayne, and he's talking to Batman in the Batman voice. And when he answers the phone, his it just switches to that high, like high, you know. <laughs> business corporate bruce wayne innocent voice and then once he hangs up goes right back to the dark batman voice talking to alfred and you're just like yes <laughs> even though nobody else is yes. around yeah you know what i mean He's like, like it's Bat- batman's like one second i got a phone call yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey jim how's it going and <laughs> it's just like hi how are you right. it's me bruce <laughs> i love that line at the beginning of arkham city where like he's doing that like campaign thing to shut down the the prison and mm. vicky vale goes i millionaire bruce wayne is going to be here and he walks past he goes it's billionaire vicky millionaire is so uh, last year yeah oh that's true yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's such yeah. a good scene <laughs> Uh, yeah, and honestly, being a millionaire doesn't mean like shit now. So not anymore. <laughs> really no. Apparently on. not. It's when we get change. old, billionaire is gonna be poor. Yeah, yeah. honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good choices, guys. Brandon, do you want to go or do you want me to go? I'll go because apparently Danny's just ready to pounce me. I know. So. <laughs> this one's hard because I don't want to say one is better than the other, but I'm gonna put it this way: that they're two of them are tied. Where when he's not talking, Ben Affleck. And when he is talking, Kevin Conroy. 
Yeah. See, mm-hmm. Ben Affleck has a good bad voice because he has that weird augmentation thing that kind of like love that about yeah, it. Yeah, it works. It makes so much sense, and it was probably one of the smartest things they could ever do for a live action Batman. Because I'm like, oh my god, it actually sounds like it could work. Like, scary. Yeah, Especially it's scary, and it hides his voice. Uh, but yeah, Christian Bale. <laughs> it's just like uh, Christian we'll Bale get to his... Christian Bale. Yeah, we'll get to him. Uh, yeah, so it's just like, but the thing is when Kevin Conroy speaks, like, I mean, yeah, it's nostalgia and just, yeah, again, he's done it for like 20 years and it works. The third one, that one was hard because I'm looking at my list now and I don't know if I want to say Adam West for the memes (laughs) or if I want to (laughs) say, um, you know, that guy, Diedrich Bader, just because of how ridiculous he sounds. And at the same time, I really want to say Roger Craig Smith. And I know that's unpopular opinion. Who did he do? Know, Roger Craig Smith was the Batman in Arkham Origins. And that's right. Oh, that's Forget right. about that guy. Yeah. That's and right. he was also, it, it's, to me, it's also his talent. Like him in Arkham Origins, I think he's a good young Batman in all honesty. Like, I, I, early I stages. agree. I like that. Yeah. And he also did some animated films, but, and it works. And his range, again, if you play a lot of video games, if you've played Assassin's Creed, he's the same voice actor for Ezio in mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed 2. Oh. And on top of that, he's the same voice actor for Sonic in a lot of the recent Sonic the Hedgehog games. <laughs> really? That's awesome. And that range is ridiculous. So I got to say, for a young Batman who's still in the works, I want to say Roger Craig Smith as my third choice. Um, that whole voice cast for Arkham Origins, I really like that Joker too. Troy Baker, I want to. Oh, say. dude, yeah, oh, yeah. He played. Uh, he played Jason Todd in Arkham Knight. Oh, really? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. Whoa, the, uh, a game that came out five years ago. My bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> he did the Suicide Squad Joker too? You know. Yeah, he did. He was uh, so good as Joker. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It was assault on Arkham. Yeah. I just watched that uh, recently, and I wanted to reflect back to it because that's such a good prequel to the Arkham movie. I love that movie. It, it works. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, it works. And it like came out, I forgot, either right before or right after the live-action Suicide Squad. And it just oh, redeemed right that team. Right yeah. before, right? It was yeah. right before. To build up the hype. Was, yeah. yeah. Exactly. They, they, and, they like to set it up. And everybody what, saw um, the crappy Suicide Squad movie instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it's always a, happens. It was one of those things where it just like gets you hyped up and just to get let down so hard by even more like yeah. because of that light. Yeah, act. yeah. Oof. So, uh, Brandon, well, I'm the last start one for my honorable mention. Oh, George uh, Clooney. Yeah, Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna make a case for. Uh, let me. I'm gonna make a case for George Clooney later. I, I will okay. say that George Clooney was like an older. If they continued, if they modernized the 66 series, he did pull off like that can't be Batman, that older can't be Batman. Like it, he, oh, he wasn't, yeah, like, a, he like, wasn't like a terrible Bruce Wayne either. He like, wasn't a terrible Bruce Wayne. He was just like, it's just a naughty Bruce Wayne. Like I remember the doorbell like uh, was ringing and he was just like, oh, don't worry, Alfred. It's the first time in 30 years. And then you're just like, yeah, man, like the first time in 30 years he's getting old like do you not yeah. realize like he's getting old Bruce like yeah he George Clooney was good at being a rich old white man <laughs> yeah he really was like and the thing about uh Clooney's um I don't know I I, I tried rewatching it to because we want to do a commentary on it and I got 20 minutes in and he just looks lost when he has the bat cow on like every angle he's just like <laughs> he's, not looking in the right direction where he's like this hi freeze I'm Batman <laughs> yeah, he bobs back and forth. I know. Uh, we'll get to that. But, but uh, uh, yeah, so. honorable mention, um, Frank Wel- uh, Welker, the Scooby Doo Batman. I love oh, him. yeah. <laughs> oh, Actually, and he did, yeah. he did Batman in the uh, in the Super Friends. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah. super fun stuff too. Yeah, I, I just he think actually was... was the definitive Batman voice for a long time. Right, I, yeah. he's oh. one of my childhood like nostalgic Batman. Um, and another honorable mention, <laughs> uh, Ke- <laughs> <laughs> to the Batmobile, <laughs> Kevin right. Porter. Did you guys ever Kevin... watch the Bat in the Sun? Oh, oh man, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, dude, that's he is a really good one. He's built for it. He's devoted to the role. He does great yeah. in every one of those like movies they're awesome shorts if you guys haven't checked Darth out Vader. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, that was such a oh, cool wow, video. Really? Oh, they yeah. are really good. Yeah. And he just fits Game those suits Wolverine. so well. Like, it's yeah, the only that Batman. The is like oh, better than the movies. Yeah, <laughs> dude. They did that whole Jason Todd one too. Um, oh, Jason Todd versus cause... Red Hood, or not yeah. <laughs> versus no, a Punisher. Jason Todd ver- yeah, I was like, man, come on. Oh, I, I wasn't talking about that won. one. Um, I was talking about the one where like Joker kills Jason Todd. Like they did a little short film oh. where that happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I like the one where Deadpool captures Catwoman and Batman's got to come yeah. save her. I didn't watch it because it was Deadpool in it. <laughs> <laughs> such haters. He's um, there. Well, he's he, a, he's uh, he's also the only Batman yeah. we've seen in like the cloth bat suit. And uh, that's what I want to see. Who, who was the guy who did Batman in the uh, Batman Predator, uh, Alien versus Predator short movie? Do you know which is one it, I'm talking about? Is it not Kevin Porter? I don't it know. Might be. I, I wouldn't no be idea. surprised. I haven't seen that one. It's an old. It came out what like around the same time the Dark Knight did. I forgot what it's called. Batman. Wow. Oh, Batman Dead End. Yes, no. that one. Oh, okay. I'll tell you right now. That one's a really good oh. one. Yeah, Clark Bartram. Oh, okay. Yes, that guy should that, get an honorable if mention. If you want too. a good Batman suit, that's it. That's in that it. Movie. Yeah. I might have got him, like, because I saw a lot of these when I was a kid, and you're discovering, like, internet and looking up yeah. videos. And a lot of these right. are from, like, the early <laughs> 2000s. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, I, will, I, will, <laughs> I will say this. Uh, I don't like cloth Batman. I just no? can't. I can't, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm just like, if you're going to go out and fight crime, you ain't wearing like a unitard. No, you're wearing hockey pads. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you're not wearing hockey, hockey pads. pads. Yeah. I don't wear hockey oh, pads. Man. Oh, God. I hate this. <laughs> okay. Are you so, going marbles? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Um, right. Well, my what number three. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Right. Sorry. You forgot Sorry. your top three yet. Uh, my number three is Peter Weller for The Dark Knight Returns because yes. Peter Weller, yes. yeah. um, I love that adaptation. It's such a good adaptation. I'm so glad they did People it. People hate on it. Really? I've heard a lot of yeah. praise over it. I just hate uh, it because I'm a Superman fan. But I think critic. Good. I think critic review wise, I have to look. It's not like I have a computer right in front of me, but it uh, it wasn't well received <laughs> because a lot of people said it dragged on, and I'm like, it's not easy. The book isn't necessarily that short for adaptation. And they they adapted yeah. the book word for word too. Yeah, it was just a shot for shot remake. It was adaptation. everything but the inner monologue, which is good because like there's moments yeah. that would sound really weird, like Dick, I'm sorry, I need you, Dick. <laughs> just like, you know what i mean like uh, and you don't know what he's talking about you know yeah. um yeah. uh my number i two, want you to remember the one man who beat you yeah so good just beat superman's dumbass. uh number two diedrich bader oh Raymond yeah bold and harley quinn dude i love this okay. dude from the drew carey show <laughs> oh, oh, oh that's right oh <laughs> it was the UPS guy. oh my um, god <laughs> Oh, he was also uh God. he's uh he's uh what's his name from the um neighbor in office space you know he's also yeah he's that and he's also in that other movie uh rex kwando in uh napoleon dynamite oh, i think oh that's right yeah he goes uh, Hi, i'm rex kwando and you can learn how to do karate or something yeah. like that <laughs> it's been kicking you, you a motherfucker a roundhouse yeah, yeah. For these babies, yeah. <laughs> you want to get one of these? Yeah. And like his it's, his wife is like more ripped than him, and mm-hmm. someone tries to hit on her or something. Yeah, Dude, that's, and, oh, and shout out to the Drew Carey show. It's a forgotten sitcom of the nineties. It is. He's a. It's underrated. A, it is underrated. Hey, uh, Brandon, just to get back to uh, the Dark Knight Returns, Rotten Tomatoes, hundred percent, part one. Okay, part two though. <laughs> part two uh, i can't see it hold up uh where is it at do, 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 do. it doesn't say see people wow. hate it on it as a, like i'm telling you it wasn't that well received for it's how because good. the book is overrated brandon the book is not overrated i reread it it's it good. is overrated that's another one okay. another episode was born <laughs> okay all right so Number brandon one. did you got do you got any more uh one. yes i do have one wait i'm actually looking up the reviews on this too real quick <laughs> uh, i'm pretty sure people hated on it i'm not hating on it i'm saying i'm pretty sure other people did 
I don't know. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Rotten Tomatoes Part 2. Da, 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 da. I don't know. Maybe it won't. Oh, 94%, dude. Really? That's the audience hey, score. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, critically, I thought. Like, critic reviews. Oh. Okay, um, the movie's overrated. Just... Moving on. No, the movie's phenomenal. <laughs> just like that book, because Miller was in his prime back then. Miller in his prime. Yeah, post Daredevil. Yeah, pre-drugs. Yeah. Or he maybe the pretty, beginning. He maybe. looks pretty bad right now. Hey, I told you, when Frank Miller was at his best, he is literally the best. I stand Dude, by that. I'm reading Lone Wolf and Cub, and every single essay he writes in the beginning of, beginning of every issue is just so informative and compelling and it just really sets you up to enjoy that series yeah and his daredevil his art style at the time it's phenomenal when it comes to motion like the oh, opposite yeah. of Dude, some other artists. his wolverine book <sighs> the action scenes in that are in beautiful exactly beautiful. okay um, right. okay track, moving on one. we've gotten so distracted right. um You're mr Keaton Conroy. That's my number one. Mr. Okay. Keaton Conroy. Kevin Conroy. All right. We can all agree. Kevin Conroy. Number one. No, Keaton yeah. Conroy. Oh, Keaton Conroy. Keaton. Who's, Keaton. who's Keaton Conroy? Keaton Conroy. Because I couldn't decide. Michael Keaton and Kevin oh, Conroy. Ke- oh, Keaton oh, Conroy. I'm all, I thought you said Keaton. I was all Keaton. Who's that? I didn't hear that was Keaton. Keaton Conroy. You're just, well, I mean, you're just in denial of Keaton's greatness. All right, motherfucker. All right, tell me go. about Michael <laughs> Keaton's greatness. Now, now I gotta, now I gotta bleak that out. Want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. <laughs> yeah, let's right. get nuts. Yeah, you want to get nuts? Right. Let's get nuts. All right, like, let's that's... start debating. All right, wait, wait. Actually, before we start debating, should we start with why we agree on some are the best, or should we just go straight into the debating? Okay, let's yeah. just start. Let's just go with each Batman. Let's start with Adam West. Oh, I don't, yeah, you know, great. Adam West was great for his time, for what he was yeah, given. He, for what he he's had iconic. Represent. Yeah. Yeah, um, like, can't I be Batman exists because of him. And he came I, back for the animated yeah. movies, which were, dude, yeah. I, I've seen the first one. It is goofy as hell. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. you have to chug a bottle of wine to really enjoy it sometimes. But, like, <laughs> it is funny as hell. Like, <laughs> I, I think that he is probably one of the most comic accurate Batmans, though, because if you read Silver Age, it's, just like that TV show. Yeah. And they might as well just put Zebra Batman in the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally agree. It was, I mean, dude, he dances, he gets the girls. Like, come on. Like, he goes yeah. swimming with the bat trunks, the shark and, repel spray. Talk oh, about yeah. driving oh, yeah. the coolest Batmobile. That is they legit the coolest bat, Batmobile. Oh, they literally cool. took Captain Kirk and they just made him Batman. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. basically it. Yeah. Oh, dude, nice. nice. I didn't have, oh, I, that's a gem. That's one of my prized possessions right there. The Hell Zebra yeah. Batman, and it's an original print, all beat up. Um, Damn. But so, there's Adam West, and then I, let's, who is the one who did the voice in Super Friends? I don't uh, know. I know Frank Welker did some of the voices. Yeah, Frank time. Welker. Well, we'll just say Frank Welker. I haven't seen all of Super Friends, so I can't say. I'm be honest. Oh, that show is yes. so ridiculous. I just think it's an iconic voice because that's like the first animated mm. Batman we got. Yeah, you know? that's he was true. Batman for a long time too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I, I love uh, how they did a. Uh, they try to make it Scooby Doo and add the goofy <laughs> dog sidekick in that show and everything. And oh yeah, was yeah. that where Ace came from? No, no. no. it was it was the Super Friends cartoon. Okay. Oh, uh, then Robin was voiced by Casey Kasem, Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Holy crap! Are you serious? Yeah. Dude, did and they then- do the? Did they do the lines from like the Adam West show, like Leaping Lizards, Batman? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I remember oh, yeah. they did the, the the Legion of Doom had that trial, and the guy goes, and Robin goes, "Holy mistrials! We're innocent, Batman!" Oh my. God. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! What a time to be a comic fan when you really think about it. And then uh, right. Dark Side was voiced by the same guy who does Fred from Scooby Doo, and he was a uh, Megatron in Transformers. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, that is too awesome. I did not know that. I want to see what wow. Dark. I don't remember Dark Side in those Super Friends cartoons, but I got to go back and watch him. He was, he was like very... the only legit villain that they had. Yeah, and he also is very Kirby art style. He's very blocky. Really? Right. Yeah. Very yeah, the blocky. first couple of drawings of Dark Side aren't aren't good. I'm not gonna lie, no, they are. <laughs> like, it looks very um, awkward. 
So, uh, who would you say? Would you say after Adam West and after who was the guy that was on Super Friends? You said Peter Welker. Oh, Frank Welker. Peter Welker. Frank, Frank Welker. After that, does it pretty much kind of dissipate until you get Michael Keaton? Realistically. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rod so Keaton. Does, all right. All right. We're on the Keaton. All right, Justin, we never had this talk. I know we had the Man of Steel talk, but do you like Heat and Batman? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, so I haven't really watched them all the way through in a really long time. But the uh, the scenes that I have seen, I can't fuck with it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, man, I can't Dude, fuck the first with rooftop it. scene like, you see them in, it's such a badass scene. Like, like yeah, like for the time, for the time, for back then, as they're like just getting started with, you know, superhero movies and really trying to like take them seriously and make money off of them. Yeah, man, it, it you know it worked. Obviously, you know they you know got a super lot of it. There's yeah, there's some cool stuff in there, but um, yeah, uh, I feel the people that have issues with Ben Affleck's Batman, you can find the exact same problem with Michael Keaton. He Ooh, murders people. I've- Fair enough. Oh, that, he yeah. murders people. Yeah, he, like he kills a lot of people in those movies. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He, really he threw a guy down a shaft with, with di- a bomb <laughs> attached to him yeah. and laughed. He smiled and was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just threw a guy down there. He exploded in the smithereens. Yeah. No. The, no. best, oh. <laughs> the best Keaton takeout, though, was in Batman Returns when the guy has, like, the taser up to oh, yeah. Selena Kyle's neck, and he shoots the grapple gun into the wall behind him. The guy goes, you missed, and he pulls the cement out and, and clocks the guy him. in the head. Dude, they do that in the Suicide Squad animated movie that we were just talking yeah. about. Yeah, that was yeah. a little homage to that. With yeah. uh, Victor Zaz. Yeah, with Victor so, Zaz. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. I was, I was going to ask you guys this. So a lot of people do bring up this controversy about Michael Keaton killing people in Batman. Mm-hmm. So for most people, as you would know, Batman did kill in the beginning, in his actual yeah. origin story. Yeah, he had a gun. His conception of a superhero, yep. he broke yeah, necks, yeah. he shot people, he beat people to pulp, threw them off rooftops, and this is golden age beginning Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now All smiling up on the rooftop and yeah. everything. So... And I think he's become Earth 2 Batman, right? The Golden Age one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, now, with Keaton killing people in the films, you know, his Batman, is it comic accurate to the character or is it not? And do you think that makes his Batman better or worse? I will say... uh, Worse. Like you said. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I... I think it is comic accurate in a sense, but I think it's like accurate to the universe that they were creating. You know, Tim Burton when doing it was really influenced by Frank Miller and Grant Morrison and he was adding a darker tone. So he was amplifying what these creators were doing. So by taking that next step to him, that was the darker aspect. And, you know, for, for changing the game on how Batman was looked at in live action, I think he holds the same importance as Frank Miller does as changing the game and Denny O'Neill. We need to give Denny more credit, but changing the name, the game to make a Batman darker. And that's, that's, what's cool about it. You know, the all black, the armor and it's, you know, him killing. uh, I mean, it's, probably more accurate to what would really happen too. I I mean, it's the, the whole golden rule of Batman is something to like, look up to it's but it's like an impossibility i i kind of put it down to just like i don't know how how people will think about me saying this but i just feel like they didn't really know what they were doing it's true the, though the 89 mm-hmm. batman movie because like didn't read any comics at all. yeah he lied about reading the comics yeah he's, come, he's been outed oh, on that i yeah. didn't even know that yeah it's oh, yeah, i, I guarantee you off on him yeah, yeah. On Howard it's, Stern, I think that he he even admitted that on on one of his interviews on there. Yeah, if you Google did Tim Burton read a comic at the time, you'll find out he actually lied about reading because like he talks about reading the Killing Joke, but that's like the only comic he's ever read, I think. And Batman oh. kills the Joker at the end of that book. <laughs> if you yeah. interpret it that way. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, like, I mean, do you guys think that tarnishes Keaton's Batman or makes it better? Really. Uh, I mean, when it, for me, when it like 
as a character, I think it's more terrifying if Batman has a rule yeah. that he doesn't kill people. I think it is more terrifying because you know you're dead. That's it. You're 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 pretty much done for. But if you're out there committing crime and this dude comes out of nowhere and breaks your back and you're in a wheelchair for the rest of your <laughs> oh, life, oh man, yeah, it's yeah. horrifying. Yeah, you it have is. to eat through a straw for the rest of your life because you <laughs> fucked around with the wrong dude. That is horrifying. That you know <laughs> that, that does is. make sense. Yeah, uh, they do that in Dark Knight Returns where uh, he breaks the guy's leg and he's like, he's still young, he can walk. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just like right. so, <laughs> like right. so well, awesome. It is. It's just like, would he not walk if he was older? I, like, I love that. I love that part in uh, the Batman Arkham Asylum game where there's this guy hanging from like a a rope up above, and he, like he needs Batman needs to break this wall, the ceiling of this little and he building. Throws that's him through blown. it. Yeah, he like he cuts the the rope with the battering, and the guy falls like thirty feet through this cement roof. Jesus. And Batman's just like, "I got to clear the room of gas. I can't let that man die." I'm like, "I'm pretty sure he's dead." <laughs> right. So <laughs> yeah, was, I, I love. Uh, I was gonna say, I love uh, Batman Begins, or no, it was actually The Dark Knight when he took. Um, what was it? Not. Um, not Falcone, but what was the other guy? The other uh, oh Maroni. Oh, and he yeah. dropped Maroney. him. Yeah, oh, and he God. was like, "Man, I would survive this fall." He's like, "I know," and just <laughs> yeah. and he breaks go. his legs. Like, yeah. I felt so that was bad the whole for, point, buddy. I felt yeah. so bad for my dad because he had an accident like that, and I begged him to take me to see The Dark Knight in the theaters. Oh, and, oh like, no! He was, I was. He's like, "Fine, I'll take you." And he was watching the movie. He's like, oh. "This movie's pretty badass." And that scene came up, and he had to take off out of the theater. He was he like, was I like, can't handle it. I was like, I'm sorry, Dad. It didn't it, well, it's not like you knew. I yeah. know, but I still yeah. felt right? so, it. Right? Like, that was like a huge uh, thing in like the, the fucking tabloids. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, shatters this guy's ankles. <laughs> I do I do agree with Justin. It is more terrifying when a man in a, in a bat suit can come in at any moment and just break your ankles or your kneecaps in and you never walk again. Mm-hmm. Like, no. How many criminals are in Gotham to where he can just keep mowing through them and they just don't stop? Like, you know, you would think there'd be a pause or at least there's a moment where they got to recuperate. There's something like right. that that I want to bring up in, in Batman v Superman that's kind of yeah. addresses that. But but I think for, for oh, Keaton, yeah. the, way I, the reason I think Keaton is so great is that, I mean, you look at Michael Keaton, you would not suspect by his personality that he's Batman. Mm. Yeah. Well, his, I mean, especially now. I mean, I mean, Michael Keaton yeah. from the other guys. Like, <laughs> he's like, wow, wow, wow! You guys need to stop chasing waterfalls. Like, <laughs> he's so uh, no, Keaton oh is so God. underrated. He's such yeah. a funny actor. Yeah, he was good in uh, Spider Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, he's yeah. terrifying in Spider Man. Yeah, he is. Yeah. See, he's a good actor, and I never said, Danny. I never said I hated Michael Keaton as Batman. I just don't think he's the best, and I think that movie around him is not good. And. I went on record saying it. I don't, <laughs> as a Batman fan, I stand by that Keaton is a good Batman. He's a better Bruce Wayne, but that movie or surrounding him is not good. I will. I respect your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I do like about Keaton, though, is that I think Keaton's the first Bruce Wayne. I think he's the only on screen Batman that could pull off the smiling Batman and look threatening. Yeah, it's true. It's partly the lips, because like that that grin that he gives Mike that he gives Jack Nicholson at the chemical plant when like he thinks that when Jack Nicholson's all like acting like he let him go and everything, and Batman's just grinning at him. It's just like you know he's gonna like fuck you up. I, I feel like he just had like more passion than we've seen in most Batman too. Like, yeah, that's the other thing. You yeah. know, I love the final scene between him and the Joker. I love his like romance um, stuff. I love how like. He, dude, him and Catwoman's chemistry were just, I thought that was awesome. Um, I wanted to see a little bit more of them actually interacting in the bat suits. And, oh, uh, yeah. The Catwoman suit, though. And I mean, and jumping on rooftops and stuff. I yeah. think just like the universe that they made out of that was just, it's interesting and compelling. You know, it, it was yeah. very, they, they had to make that tonal shift and they did that in that movie, you know, and then they shifted it back to the goofy and then we hated it. But it was just like the right, kind of tweak it did it better than i mean dude like even his batman voice is better than clooney's and bales and his suit is awesome 
I love his suit. I love the, the armor they have sides, on it in the second one. The, yeah. The the, the suit's awesome. It's turn. just yeah, the the not being able to turn is so awkward to me. You needed to be more but flexible. That was like but, 1989, you know, but yeah, for but, that, that time and era, true. I think that's awesome. Keaton and, could rock and that he was kind also of also wearing and he was also wearing Jordans too. Yeah, that, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> dude, those Nikes are dope. Yeah, oh, no. that's true. He was. But the thing with Keaton, oh, I think, man. could rock that more like kind of stiff Batman neck thing way mm-hmm. better than Christian Bale. Because Christian okay. Bale was just like So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he changed it immediately. Yeah. yeah. So my there's only one issue I have with not being able to turn your head. And this is a legitimate one. I'm not even trying to like talk shit. Okay. I have a hard time believing one of the world's greatest fighters can't turn can kick everybody's ass, but can only do that by turning his entire body mid combat this direction. Like, yeah, his, all his shoulders have to move yeah. his head. And just, I know there's no real life accuracy to comics or superheroes. I get that, but it's just yeah. hard to like accept that this man yes. can counter a punch coming from his right when he has to turn his whole body to just see it. I heard and like, oh, go ahead, Brandon. It's just that's the only thing for me. It's just like I know Batman's like basically a superhero that's above human capabilities, but it's just to me, mid combat, it makes no sense to be able to just turn your shoulders and still be able to be like as loose and fluid as he is when he fights. That's just I, that's all. I did hear a rumor that maybe this was just them trying to cover their own ass, but like that they did that intentionally, not letting him move his neck as a way to make him look more like otherworldly. Cause like the way he's got to turn around real quick, like his he's whole very, body. It's very it alien. Does, <laughs> it does look kind of cool when he does, when they do it in certain shots. I didn't think I they did a that. very good job with it in Batman returns, but in the first movie, I thought that it looks kind of cool. Yeah. And I, I could see that. It's just, I think also if it wasn't Michael Keaton, it was going to be someone else. And we'd be talking about them the same exact way. It's also yeah, nostalgia. Yeah. Let's, like it could have been, no, like you could have, you could have. <laughs> no, no, it's not nostalgia. No, it could have been. Uh, I don't know anybody else, and we'd be defending them just as much. Hey, Bill Murray almost played Batman in the yeah, '89 movie. That would have been brutal. Jesus Christ! Oh man. You know what? Also, dude, that Batmobile. Fuck! Like, so come good. on. So yeah, the Batmobile good. is good. Yeah, dude. Don't get shields. Me wrong. I mean, ah, it's so awesome! Yeah. I just and I love when it. he yeah. says shields too. Yeah. That was so the way he's just like shields. Yeah, yeah. And then like whenever anything in life is like charging towards me and stops right before me, and I get to say stop right before, it's just perfect. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it, it's phenomenal. I don't, I don't know. know. I just and he was getting all up in Kim Basinger, so you know. Yeah, and then that yeah. that's the Sometimes. first time we see uh, Alfred pimping out Batman, being like, dude, I'm trying to get you laid. I'm really trying to get you <laughs> laid. You need like, this. Yeah. You need this I think bad. that they had the but... best on-screen chemistry, him and Michael Keaton and Michael Guff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see it. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I've um, i seen lots of people make fun of what's-his-name. Uh, what's-his-name for the Christian Bale was? Oh, Michael oh, Caine. Yeah. Mike, yeah, Michael Caine. Like I, mean, I love Michael Caine too, but to yeah, true. And I, haven't. <laughs> I just I feel like Guff was like one of the only Alfred that actually cared about Bruce Wayne, that was concerned about what he was doing. Yes, you know yes. what? Yes. In a weird way, I think Jeremy Irons did that too. In his oh, sarcasm, he did. Oh yeah, dude. We Jeremy didn't Irons, is, we did not get enough Jeremy Irons. Yeah. He's a phenomenal, no. phenomenal scar. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Right? from uh, from Lion King. <laughs> Man, I, I love that part in the movie where he's just like all he's like all butthurt. He's that like Bruce Wayne still doesn't have any kids. It's like oh, Alfred wants grandchildren. Right. Yeah. yeah, he's right. just like not that there's ever gonna be a next generation of Wayne. Right. <laughs> but, but, but for all, like, he said, he said you're like he's like you're still alive. He's like not for a lack of trying. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. like fixing up everything. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, overall, I think, I don't know, Keaton just like, you know, we got more out of him than most Batman, for sure. And I think but that's we, another at reason. At the same time, I don't think we got enough. Like, I really would have liked to see where they could have brought Keaton if they if they did like a DC shared universe back then, I would have loved to see Keaton interact with that. But we might get our chance right now if he comes back to play in the Flash movie. I will say it would have been cool if there was a shared universe if they got like Keaton and like uh, Christopher Reeves together. 
Yeah. Honestly, Ooh. that would have been dope. I think Reeves was a little too old by the time. Yeah. Because, like, the Superman movies are the 70s, right? Yeah, late 70s. Well, that would have yeah. been perfect because Superman is, like, like, you know, from the, like, golden age era and that's what the yeah. reeves is kind of based on yeah. so like seeing that evolution and now it's like a you know back then it would be more modern day batman Linda Carter as wonder woman yeah, yeah it been and cool. i mean uh, these elder like super beings meeting this mortal who's now doing it like i think yeah. it makes sense they all had experience then there's batman so the only yeah. thing that sucked about like the old superhero movies from that era is that dc was really funny with the rights to their villains really yeah, so you couldn't. That's why the Superman movies always had lame villains. Like, there was like you could lo- use Lex Luthor, and for some reason, General Zod. Hmm. I didn't yeah, know there was like, like rights issues. How, how was Superman back then going to do a good job with Darkseid? Like, let's be honest. That would be like, they, they, I, they probably said like Darkseid's too scary for kids. Yeah, probably. Uh, but um, it took one look at that face. I was like, no. no. <laughs> yeah. The Omega I, beams and everything. That would have been so cheesy. Because, I mean, think about what oh, they did. Oh, dude, it would have been great. And then, like, think about the same effects on, like, yeah. Omega oh. beams. Oh, God. Yeah. But oh. uh, I think we'll move on now to – oh, wait. You got one more thing, Brandon? I was going to say, I think, honestly, and this is my honest, honest opinion, for Keaton, he's not a terrible Batman. He's a better Bruce Wayne. I just think, unfortunately, those movies are a little dated. And yeah, there's also – it's just – there's people who have the benefits of better technology and more material to work with that become a better Batman, in my opinion. That's just better creators true. behind it. Too. Better creators yeah. oh, behind yeah. the films. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think if Keaton were the pinnacle, the star to be Batman now, it may have been better. But you know, he's the nostalgia Batman for a lot of people. That's how I put right. it. You know what? So. And you know, thinking about it that way, I think the real reason I love Keaton is just the look. Just the aesthetic of that Batmobile, of that yeah. outfit, of like that Gotham yeah. City. Like, I think it's that aesthetic that drives me more than thinking about the story and all that type of stuff. Because, yeah, you're right. They really aren't good films, you know? But it's that nostalgic, <laughs> that, that look, you know? And I, I just love that costume. Um, yeah, no, I, I uh, could see it 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. Real quick, I, I guys, when did, we, when did we start? No idea. Uh... No idea. Two, two thirty, two o'clock, somewhere in between there. Okay, I'm just gonna say two thirty. Okay. 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 Um, so. Well, if we go All down right. the line, the next Batman, <laughs> the next Batman, would be Val for live action Val Kilmer and for voice acting Kevin Conroy because the night uh, the animated series is like ninety three. Yeah. All right. Well, let's Isn't do ninety two. Uh, I thought it was ninety two. Ninety two. I think ninety two. So let's start with. We'll start with we'll do Kevin Conroy next, then. Oh, he's okay. the best. I mean, what's there yeah. to say? Yeah, I mean, that's oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He's so twenty good. years. They're not even. Well, well, when did this start? In the early nineties. So yeah, yeah, thirty. Twenty-eight years. 30 yeah, years. thirty years. He is just he finally got to be a live action Batman. It's way overdue. Yeah, in my opinion too. Oh and yeah, he like, has so much grit and gut, and there's so many stories like Dirk, especially his nine eleven stories about him helping in soup kitchens yes, and stuff like uh, that. Like, dude, he yes. is he is Batman. Batman you know, like exactly. you can't Close. define it. And his voice exactly. is what we read. Every single one of us for the last yeah. thirty years mm-hmm. only read, and probably readers before that have switched their Batman voice to Keaton. I mean, it was, to, oh, it dude. was so sad too that like we finally got to see him on screen and had to be Ruby Rose interacting <laughs> with him in the show. I was like, Oh, what an insult. You know what? No, she got better. She got better. I never saw that woman. So I don't know. Oh, we should do a live yeah, watching of that show. I've never seen I it. I haven't watched, I haven't watched Batwoman either, but I've seen the crossovers whenever she pops up in the crossovers. Yeah. Just, you know, looking at that from, you know, her other movies that she's done. She's gotten better as an actor. So yeah. Oh, uh, so legitimately, it's a little rough sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just okay. You know, I she's, she's I have no a, idea. She's not a. She's not a you know a thespian. Yeah. You uh, mm-hmm. you guys want to hear like the ultimate, uh, Kevin Conroy Batman line? There's a movie called Batman Gotham Knight, which is supposed to take place between Batman Begins and the Dark Knight. It's like an anime oh, yeah. movie yeah. that. But it's just too weird for me it's, to believe that it exists in that universe. The Animatrix of Batman movies. Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, oh yeah, but, the I've seen. Uh, I have it. 
Yeah. That's the one with all the shorts, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. just too strange for me to believe that it exists in that universe. But there is a great scene where, like, Batman's trying to rescue this uh, preacher or, like, this monk guy from uh, the Scarecrow and, like, his minions in the sewer. And, like, Scarecrow's about to execute this guy, and he has, like, that – that what's that thing the Grim Reaper carries? Sickle? The scythe. Mm-hmm. Sickle. 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 I don't that know. thing. Sickle. The, the the big blade thing. He's about to like yeah. like hit the guy in the head with it. And he's just like, "Is there anybody here who can speak for the holy man?" And Kevin Conroy's Batman is like up in the rafters, and he just yells, "I can!" And then just slides <laughs> yeah. down. And it is so. Epic. Let me announce. Let me announce before I attack. Typical. Well, <laughs> what was interesting with that movie is that they filmed the. They did the voice acting to the animation when typically they do the animation to the voice acting. So yeah. he was having to like incorporate an act over what was already made. Um, yeah. And Brian yeah. Azrillo and Greg Ruka wrote some good shorts for that too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know they wrote. I got to go back mm-hmm. to it. I saw it a few times over the years, but I haven't gone back to it in a few years. Uh, but just that one short line, just him up there, I can. Yeah. Well, he also has that famous speech from the animated series where he goes, "I am the knight," I, oh, yeah. and all that stuff. You know, I like vengeance. I am Batman. Yeah. There's that one, and like, uh, there's also that scene where he's like, "This feeling, I don't know how to describe it." And then Alfred's like, "That's happiness, Master Bruce," <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. And he's yeah. just like, "Whatever it is, I like it." Yeah. So. <laughs> I was going to say to Brandon's point, like when reading comics, you hear Kevin Conroy to this day. Yes. And, and that speaks volumes. And him and God, who's the guy? I, 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 I shouldn't forget his name because he's my favorite Superman. But is it Tim Daly who does Superman in the yeah. animated series? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The animated series. They have the best Superman and Batman chemistry. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah dude. Because Tim Daly's Superman voice, again, he defines is Superman. his voice. Yeah. Yeah. He is Superman. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I just he, and you know Kevin Conroy. I've met him a handful of times, and he's always a super nice guy. He's uh, hella soft spoken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's and he'll he'll. We do this whole thing at Comic Con. It's called Hallway Ninja, where we have to literally hide around the hallway. You, you jump on them. <laughs> yeah, we jump on them to get signatures yeah. and whatnot. So, uh, and my girlfriend's really good at it. She's just, I mean, she's sweet, so she's able to get all these people to sign. Um, and Kevin Conroy just straight up had like a short little discussion with her. And I was just like, yes, get that signature. Yes. Yes. You're just yes. in the background. It's like, yes, yes, yes. 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 Get that signature. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, Hold on. I think Justin, Bre- I just think Justin froze. Oh, no. Nope. We lost Justin. Pause the recording. All right. Okay. Go. Cool. Okay. So we're back after technical difficulties. So, yeah. Anyway, Kevin Conroy. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing bad Please. to say about the man. There is no, no, not at beautiful. all. Beautiful. He's never and had a bad Batman performance. I love how he's the one that we've had for all these years. Like he's done so yeah. well as Batman. We get the video yeah. games. We get the uh, other animated films in and outside of the animated universe. Like you know, he just meshes so well, and I'm glad that he's loved the role enough to just you know he retired. He's st- he said he was gonna stop being Batman, and and he's still being Batman. You know, <laughs> like it's yeah. just like him dude, and Mark he, Hamill. Yeah, like I mean, retired. both of them. They pulled the you know the old rock and roll card, like the farewell tour multiple times and oh, they're yeah. still going, you know, oh, there it is. That's so cool. Oh, I got to interview Kevin Conroy. This interview never got to come out. Um, but I interviewed him and he was <clears throat> so cool. And I got to get a, I'm Batman out of him at the end of the interview. Wow. And he was just so hyped up. And he, you know, when you ask him a question, he'll like really think about it. When I, inter- when I used to yeah. interview uh, creators and actors and voice actors, um, William Shatner was like, I mean, he's it's William Shatner, so he's a little douchey, you know what I mean? But he, oh, he's a huge <laughs> douche. <laughs> I, I, I he think knows I asked who William, is. like, something about his way of toothpaste. He's like, Well, it's me, like, how else could it not be great? And I was like, All right, <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but Kevin Conroy, it's like, me. he like gave a story and explanation, and he had passion and ideas, and it felt like an authentic answer. And I, you know, you could tell when it's not just the same rinse and repeat type of thing. Yeah, um, just Conroy. Yeah, he's never never been a bad Batman, and I feel bad for those actors that like you know that they get asked to say the same line over and over and over and over and over, yeah. and over again. Yeah, 
It's like, yeah, it's like Kevin Conroy was like, how many times do you think he's been asked to say I'm Batman? But dude, when he yeah. said it, I felt like his, his voice, weird. like the, the bass behind his voice, like in the room yeah. shake, like, uh, yeah, he has such I mean, that guy, power. I, think, I was going to say, I think that, that 9-11 story, you know, kind of woke something up in him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. That he realized, because like when he said, I, I forgot who he said he was talking to, but the guy was like, dude, how does it feel to be Santa Claus? Like, you're a Christian. Have you guys heard That's this you Kevin are. Conroy story, you guys? I've heard of it. I haven't heard the full details. I haven't heard it. Tell he me. He was helping after 9-11 in a, like in yeah. a restaurant, and he was cooking for everybody and because they were taking volunteers and all that. And they were asking, like, oh, what's your day job? And he's like, I'm a voice actor. And he was the guy who asked him, he's like, I knew it. I knew it. You're Batman. And then he was just uh, like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like say it, guys. He's, uh, he's like, he's, he said it. And he's like, oh, like, my gosh. And he went outside. And he told everyone that was eating, he's like, guys, guys, Batman is making your food. And then um, <laughs> someone was like, prove it. And then uh, he did it. He did the, I am um, vengeance. I am night. I am Batman. And it just like, everyone cheered and got super happy. And uh, the guy was like, do you hear that? Like, and this is post 9-11 where everything is just yeah. hell there, you know? And he's like, do you hear that? Like, dude, how does it feel? Like, how does it feel to be Santa Claus to these people? And yeah he was saying he's like that's when it hit like i you know just my presence and i didn't think i was anything i was a voice actor i'm not there saving lives or any of that and it just meant so much that i changed all these people's day and dude i get teary-eyed when i hear like even talk about that story like it has so much power behind it that's cool you know people tend to forget go ahead brandon i was gonna say just people tend to forget that uh at a certain point superheroes do symbolize something for certain people yes they they really do you know regard take like if you take your if you take certain politics out of it and if you take certain history out of it and just like the core of what like what superheroes are supposed to be and what they represent in most cases and i'm not trying to speak for everyone of course either it's just they tend to really symbolize this idea of hope and like protection for a lot of people and like this escapism as well you know like it's it's sometimes something people seem to like forget about or you know don't even realize until moments like that like this guy was just a voice actor for a kid's cartoon and the fact that he was serving food in a kitchen and that people were like served by him it was like this a bomb went off in their brain like holy crap you know it like it went off and it was like that's batman serving our food you know Mm -hmm. yeah you know yeah it's the idea explode like just it just bursted and everyone just from that energy was just so pumped and like exhilarated a better response though if the guy asked him like what do you do for a living or like who are you if he just responded instead of saying i'm a voice actor if he just turned and said i'm batman (laughs) i am fire in him too Uh, yeah that's the whole thing about it is that kevin was saying like just how helpless he felt you know he's like i mean i play batman i'm playing a fictional person like he didn't see the importance you know and i mean now i'm sure that would have been like the immediate type of thing but at the the time in you know 2001 we've had 20 years to build on that character since then um it it just it was like groundbreaking you know and you know comic-con wasn't a big thing then and it was fairly big but it wasn't like what it is now and you know, that fan connection and, you know, half of his work, he's done more work in the last 20 years than his first 10, which usually it's kind of the other way around, you know? Um, So it just, it's crazy, you know, and being able to go out there and just try to find a way to help and not realize that he was helping in a totally different type of way without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Val Kilmer, Batman forever. Yes. Let's move on to Val Kilmer. (laughs) What a legacy. Well, I think, Val Kilmer and George Clooney are kind of, they feel yeah. a little they're totally separate. bunched together. You know, the Joel Schumacher films. Mm-hmm. And for a lot completely of them, different. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Justin, are we around the same age? Uh, I'm 29. Okay, yeah. I'm 20. Yeah. So you definitely grew up with those films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Because we, sure. we all grew to, up with I went them. to the theaters. Mm-hmm. To the theaters <laughs> oh, man. To see um, Batman and Robin. How was yeah. that as a kid? How was that right as a kid? After, right after church, right after church. Oh, there you go. Me. My mom surprised me. She took me to go see that movie. 
Were you like, I don't want to go, and then your mom's like, we'll do something after? (laughs) No, no, it was just like, I I grew up in the church, so I was like, you know, it's Sunday, I already knew, you know, what we had to do. Routine. Yeah, yeah, you had the routine ready? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But that day, I was like, oh, wow, we're actually going to go see, you know, the Batman movie. I was so excited, because, you know, it's the 90s, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was huge back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was happy to see him in that, too, like. And you're a kid, you don't. pumped. You don't realize how bad it is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I you're probably like, it. I loved it as a child. Yeah, we all movies. did. We loved all both those movies. movies. Yeah. yeah, like mm. I, I remember being confused as to why Batman. I didn't know actors when I was a kid. I was like, why does he look different right. in both mm-hmm. films? You know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. But I was like, man, I was like, um, I didn't realize it as a kid, but like thinking back on it now, I was like, wow. That theater was empty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a bad the, sign, man. And, and we all know people go to the movies on Sundays. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, they, they do. do. Oh yeah. Not as much as Friday and Saturday, but people still go. Mm-hmm. So for me to go see that movie after church, so that means it was a little later in the day, and for it to be like you know damn near empty. That's bad. That's when you know you're moving. You know, <laughs> you know, this happened to me a couple times when I was a little kid. Cause like I always like me and my friends would always like make my dad drink and like take us to the most trash movies that we thought were like amazing. <laughs> and one of them was a uh, Ghost Rider. And oh, no. my dad was a big Ghost Rider fan growing up. He had Ghost Rider number one and everything, and he's wow. still mad that he got rid of it. But uh, he was like, yeah, I'll take you guys to see that. I used to like Ghost Rider growing up. And like, we were just like, this is amazing. That movie was like the greatest movie ever. And it took like my dad years to tell, like to tell us, he's like, you know, that movie kind of sucked, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We were in such I denial. I liked it when that. I first saw it. I loved it when Ghost. I like. I loved it when I first saw because like Ghost Rider just on screen with Nicolas Cage up there. It's uh, just like, if just, you get it, I am the Ghost Rider, and <laughs> I need to get on my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but oh man, uh, but Val, Val Kilmer was just like he was. I mean, as a kid, I loved it. I loved Batman Forever. That was my favorite one as a yeah. kid. And yeah. out of the yeah, two, definitely. it's still great. Like, you know, rewatching Jim it, it Carey, was a lot of fun. Man. Jim yeah. Carrey, Chris O'Donnell. Like, I mean, yeah. sadly, Tommy Lee Jones is the worst part of that movie. I can um, really see the potential, though, where they what? could have made that work. Mm-hmm. It's because, especially because, like, it was just a bad direction. Because, I mean, like, you can't, like, 100% blame him. You know, it's the director's job to be like, okay, don't be the Joker. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. Well, no, don't. Then, especially, it's... especially when you have the Riddler, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is already doing all the crazy you need. Yeah, There's no yeah. Abbott and Costello mm-hmm. whatsoever. Right, he's well, literally I, as crazy as they get. I just don't and, think that you know Two Face and the Riddler mesh together. I don't think those no. are two good villains to put side by side. You know, I think they were just going for what's the most colorful thing we could do. You know, like what, <laughs> yeah. who's Green, next on, new, who's next on the list? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it was like. And, but you know, like, I, I don't even blame Jill Schumacher for this. So I blame the studio because yeah. they were just like, we need to make it lighter after, after like, Batman Returns. So, like, here. They, like, the studio did mess with more than, you know, they're accounted for. And Schumacher got yeah. a lot of shit for a lot of things when it really wasn't his fault. Um, I didn't realize Schumacher, how much, like, Warner Brothers has butchered a lot of DC movies. Like, that's oh, the yeah. reason why the Superman yeah. series went downhill, I found. Yeah, out. definitely. Well, Schumacher's made some dope movies. Like, once I yeah. looked at his, like, filmography, like, dude, he's done awesome mm-hmm. stuff. And sadly, these are probably worst two of his movies. worst, worst yeah. movies. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, for the, it's kind of like Adam West. For the memes, they are amazing it's like it's how it's star wars prequels yeah it's like the star wars prequels those are not good films as film but when you watch it with your homies and you're just hanging out talking Mm -hmm. shit like those movies like what we did yeah like we did on we did the commentary on forever and i had a blast we were just sitting there bashing on it and praising it and you know there's so many good elements and it's still it's honestly one of the best Batman movies, you know? The yeah. gadgets, the car, the villains, yeah. the take on, the, the badass weird. shot. Yeah, the, the badass. Ending. Like I the... loved I remember as a kid, like you know, when you had VCRs back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
kept I kept rewinding that ending because that part where he dove down. Oh yes, got up the <laughs> grappler to save girl, and then dove down again to save homeboy. And then hit the grappler again. I'm like, yo, this is great. Like, this, this is like <laughs> great shot, dude. It's super it cool. So, yeah. And then, I, and then I, you yeah. get that amazing uh, Nicole Kidman shot where she's falling in her. Oh, skirt. you get like oh, a, yeah. you get a milli, you get a millisecond. Yeah. They're like, we got a PG-13. We could do yeah. this. You get like just a like, mil- <laughs> millisecond. Yeah, as a kid, I'm you're like, just getting the controller out. Like, pause, play, pause, yeah. play, pause. You get that, <laughs> you get that <laughs> like, you get the Nicole Kidman like side cheek with like tights or something, yeah. and this is like, like a second. Go. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as the Batman character for both of them, I still think Val Kilmer, like, he was all right. He wasn't, except when he does, like, his weird, like, you don't know what you're doing. His, like, angry, his angry I, Batman. I don't know. I, I, I love like watching Chris O'Donnell, like, try to, like, angry punch, like, Val Kilmer. And I'm just like, bro, Chris O'Donnell could kick the shit out of you. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, Batman wasn't ripped on screen until Christian Bale. And he wasn't mm-hmm. bulky until Ben Affleck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like, ben yeah. Affleck's the first. Like, I try the MCU really fix this with superhero movies. Because they're just like, you. we need, like, if you're going to play a superhero, you had to get yeah. bulk. You got yeah. yeah. you, you to you you burst know. out of those spandex, you know? Uh. Who do you think is going to be the ones to, like, do that type of stuff they're gonna get ex-military and athletes yeah to, yeah you know, to to if this is real yeah you know. yeah yeah so but um i want to yeah. say though i want to say real fast though the best one of the best batman shots was when it was val kilmer i think two-face was like trying to like blow him up and he like comes out of the fire yeah the, oh, the cape, the way it looks and everything. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's just yeah. the look My, on his face, like you about to get your ass whooped. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> that scene's cool. But we talked about it in the commentary. My only thing is, how does his chin not get burned? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> true, true. He actually like, a thing for his suit, but his chin is just all exposed. Yeah, it'd it's be cool a, if he had like, like a mask or oh. yeah. Oh, and then the, the best Batman, the, to me, the best shot out of the movie. <laughs> It's that freaking smile that he does after he like after he goes and tries to bang Nicole Kidman's character. He's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like when he walks away. And there, the, that's the movie that does the it's famous the car, thumbs up. The chicks take the car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can right. tell that he can't breathe through his nose, even though the way he talks, he's just like, "It's a car, right?" Chicks take the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then like George Clooney. That's the one with the bat nipples and the ice skates. Uh, like, oh, that bat nipples. We can't put that nip- all on George Clooney. <laughs> like, it's not his fault, but the bat nipples look awkward. I'm cool with the ice skates. Mr. Freeze is involved. Sure. I'm with it. Dude, I like ice honestly, skating. Sure. I actually <laughs> think Clooney had a very good cow. I rewatched the first 20 because I only get through the first 20 minutes of that movie. Uh, I got to the point where Alicia Silverstone comes in and I was like, all right, fuck this piece of shit. Um, and, but dude, the first 20 minutes are a blast. Like it is super fun. The back edge play is hockey. ridiculous. Do they surf from first off? Wait, how the, oh my and we'll God, talk about it surf. when we do a commentary, but how I'm so sorry. I'm going to be cussing so much in your channel, but how the fuck does a scientist have a fucking rocket ship. Like, where the hell does he get the funding to get this rocket ship in the beginning then, of Batman and Robin? Like, What was his plan exactly? So he got on the ship, went all the way up there, blew it up, just like, to fly back down. Wasn't it? To, Dude, and he has wings. What kind of student has like, wings like that? Right? Like, <laughs> I just what love the, the way he calls. I love the way he calls Robin. He's just like big boy. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! But I mean, <laughs> it's, it's total 1966. Like I could see it. Like if they did a, you know, have you guys watched the 66 animated movies? Uh, uh-uh, not yet. No. I want to. Oh gosh, we should do a commentary on those. Uh, um, if uh-huh. if that was an animated movie now with Adam West, it would totally it would totally work. It'd be fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, but just, I thing. hate how Robin is such a bitch in that movie. He complains yes, about yes, he is. everything. Dude, it's he is. him and Batman. Like, dude, yeah. like, George, like he can't function without Alfred. He's like crippled without Alfred. You know, <laughs> literally like, can't do anything. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Justin? Uh, I was gonna say one quick thing though about uh, Val Kilmer though is um, when he got the call that he was gonna be Batman. Um, he was doing research for another movie, so he was in Africa. He was in a cave 
full of bats. Yeah. What? How awesome is that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What? Yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Dude, there's like uh he got the I, call. Yeah, you got the job. Oh I shit, think we bro. watched the <laughs> same special, Justin, because I watched the that, yeah. is it like a 30 minute making of of Batman yeah. Forever? Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. it on oh my YouTube. God. Yeah. The thing um, the thing I feel really bad about for with Val Kilmer is that everybody made so much fun of him because I don't know if you guys know this. He kind of like disappeared for a while after like the early two yeah. thousands mm -hmm. and he got really, really fat. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then everybody really, made fun of him. Really skinny. And then now he's really skinny. And I guess he had a throat cancer. He can't talk anymore. Yeah. Really? Whoa, really? Yeah. He's got to yeah. talk through like the, the voice box oh. thing or, or something. Yo, yeah, what? Yeah. 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 It's hella sad yeah. what happened to him. Oh yeah, my man. god, dude! The last thing I saw him when was MacGruber. Man, he was yeah, such a good-looking guy. I saw, yeah, yeah I remember him. Seen him uh, last thing I seen him in was that Mars movie. Yeah, he was in a movie with Robert Downey Jr. I remember too. Before like Robert Downey Jr. went oh, off the deep end. Oh yeah, yeah. Where before he tells he Man. tells Robert Downey Jr. He's just like, you know what happens? What would happen if you look up the word idiot? You know what you'll find if you look up the word idiot in a dictionary? And Robert Downey Jr. goes, a picture of me. And he goes, no, the definition of the word idiot, which you fucking are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, ooh yeah. It says he had a two-year battle with throat yeah. cancer and a procedure on his shit. trachea has reduced his voice to yeah. a rasp and rendered him short of breath. Yeah. Oh man, I did not know that. Yeah, he and looks pretty course. rough. Well, dude, he's still or, doing stuff. Like, dude, he's he's in the Top Gun sequel. Dude, oh, he was in Jane Silent Bob's reboot. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw yeah. that. I saw that live. Oh really? Oh, yeah, I went to the Kevin Smith premiere, and he really? was on stage with oh, Jason. Oh Hughes. my god, that's awesome. yeah. There was a... He's in Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, Top yeah. Gun that movie. I don't know why it's getting yeah. a sequel. But why well, not? It's Tom Cruise. Money. He's, that's really yo, yeah. Scientology. He did a voice in Spider Man Edge of Time, Walker Sloan. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't that. played that one, but hey, he's oh, still wow. working. He's still working. Um, so yeah, back to George Clooney though. Um I think yeah. George Clooney could have been a really good Batman with a good a good script because he is kind of like Bruce Wayne in real life. But I heard uh -huh. something about it, like he didn't know anything about Batman other than Adam West, and that's all he knew. And that's why yeah. he had to like, and it like shows. Uh, yeah, it the, shows like crazy. the directors probably didn't give him much to work with or tell him what to research either. Yeah, because I don't think they knew much yeah. about Batman either. Yeah, so but remember, it's, it's a kids' movie. Yeah, yeah, it is a kids movie. yeah. Like all those suits were designed; those stupid suits were designed. <laughs> just <laughs> shut Sorry. up, Brandon. He just sounds so angry. <laughs> I know, I know. My voice gets high when I get mad, but um. What was I saying? Damn it! You made me lose my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, those suits were all just designed. They were shoved into the movie just for toys. Oh yeah, yeah which was course. great when we were kids, and now it's annoying. Oh yeah, like, dude. When we were growing up, I had so many badass Batman action figures, and I was never impressed by action figures growing up. I was just like, really? these just they're not. They don't move enough. Oh, I. And now you and collect then, the hell out of them. And then yeah, but then all the cool like Marvel Legends and everything didn't come out till like I was like older. Damn. Well, who comes? Uh, I mean, and this is, dude, we're not even at the year 2000 yet. Um, this, I think when, it's Christian Bale's next. Yeah. Got, like, there was everything. a big gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who did the voices on George the, Clooney movie. I think yeah. The Batman might have been the next cartoon. I don't even remember. Oh, who yeah. That, that was Rhino, but... Romero, Rhino Romano who did oh. Spider Man in the. Uh, really? In the, yeah, and the the Spider Man PS One game. I hated yeah. that show. I haven't really watched it. I just can't. But the thing the is, I liked it. I thought it was okay. It was a good show. It wasn't as good. I think once the animated series and Batman Beyond had finished, it was like, what was next? And the Batman and Brave and the Bold kind of suffer from that. Yeah. And <clears throat> it, you know, the Batman failed because it tried to. And oh wait, there's also uh, Beware the Batman as well. Can't forget That's that later one. on. That's like yeah, yeah. But, but those I three. I try to emulate or, the animated series with a modern, I don't know. The like Batman a, tried to put design. a new twist on it, which is something I could understand. I could like appreciate <laughs> at least. It was the Jackie Chan adventures of Batman cartoons. Pretty much. You know what? That makes total sense. And I love the Jackie Chan adventures. <laughs> I, yeah. I did too. too. <laughs> I was yeah. obsessed with Jackie Chan when I was I, a little kid. I've been yeah. wanting to rewatch that series. Cause I never, I, I can't get past the first like, Four Dude, episodes, he didn't you know? voice himself. It's great. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like those three. The problem with Beware the Bad One is they tried being way too edgy with weird CG later on, and it just didn't work. It but like, I, I don't they know totally, where villains. They, oh, well, that's what I liked about Beware the Batman was uh, Professor Pig and, like, yeah. uh, like all these and hush was in it not appropriate but, for a kid's show no, but like the gun-toting yeah. alfred and katana being involved it was way too obscure for the general audience yeah, yeah you, you need that, to work yeah. those characters in i did like brave and the bold though because it was actually oh, brave like, and, oh it's funny second, brave and the bold is like second to best yeah, yeah. i i regretted i you know i watched brave and the bold after it got canceled after the third season got finished and i watched it years later because i never gave it a chance and i love how they even call bat might even calls it out saying that nobody was going to give that show a chance because of the look and everything like they acknowledge it in the show and they even called out how the next show is going to be cgi and dark and all this and then you get beware yeah. of the batman but dude beware i mean uh brave and the bold is hands down the best ma- silver age batman stuff yes it's yeah. it's honestly neck to neck with the animated series every episode is awesome there's I've I've never cried so much during a cartoon. Wow. They own up to it. That's <laughs> why. Yeah. Dude, the <laughs> final episode. <laughs> Dude, the final episode when he's saying goodbye and like all the cardboard props are leaving in the background, you're just like, good. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a good the show. Time, uh, what's his name? Time, comes back. Huh? I was going to say the only time that um, I cried for a cartoon Batman, it was Justice League, I think, Unlimited. It's mm, when he's on the he's on the swing with mm-hmm. uh, little Ace. Yeah, yeah, dude. That that just yeah, rips just, your epilogue. That's the episode yeah. where we find oh, out. Oh, hold on, I Zack got, Snyder, I got take notes. <laughs> Zack Snyder, take I notes. Was, that is like the greatest like wrap up to Batman. That was hard Beyond. to watch. Yeah, yeah. Was that was watch, just, that was like yeah. one of his final missions, wasn't it? Before he. <clears throat> No, it was just uh, one of the things no, that was, he was yeah. getting older and he wasn't, you know, moving as fast. Like that's Same. what. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I there's an episode of Batman Unlimited or the Justice League Unlimited that I I hated Batman in, and it was the episode where Brainiac invades uh, Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. And remember, Superman has a fight with Darkseid, I think, because he hates Darkseid that much. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm-hmm. Superman's willing. He's just like, I'm going to hold you here. And if this planet blows up and we both die, that's the way it's going to go. And Batman comes in and opens up the boom tube and sucks super- and sucks Superman in before the planet explodes. And Superman's like, no! <sighs> Batman stole that victory from Superman. And he's then, that kind of guy. And then yeah, Darkseid has yeah. that... Darkseid has that amazing line at the end after the boom tube closes, right before everything explodes. He just looks and he smiles. He goes, eh, loser. <laughs> and the whole planet explodes and he dies. Well, uh, what was it? Superman did the same thing to him, though. It was, uh, I think uh, Batman was like crashing like the watchtower. Oh, like, yeah. On the Earth. And he was almost there. He was just about to explode. And then Superman swoops in. So that was. Him. That was such a good moment, though, between those two because, like, like Superman smiles at him. He's just like, you always have to be the hero, don't you? And Batman's, and Batman's like, hey, right back at you. <laughs> so they, oh, got their, they got their friendship down so well in that show. There's that other episode where it cuts to Batman and Superman. They're sitting in the Batmobile drinking coffee together. Oh, I love that, yeah. They're on <laughs> See, a stakeout. <laughs> I, I like when Batman and Superman are chilling as bros. I don't like when I they're feuding. That. Like, I don't. I'm over the whole we got to fight every time. Like, yeah, I like when they're just hanging mm. out, shooting the shit personally, and just like being here. Again, again, I'm very vanilla when I'm coming to my superheroes. Like, I just like my superheroes like, to do superhero shit. I like when they don't like when they don't agree. Not not so much don't get along. Yeah. When they don't agree. Well, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're clashing. Boy right? Scout, yeah. Yeah, little boy no, scout it. about it, and Batman's like, "No, nah, I'm gonna beat the shit out of everybody." Well, I mean, <laughs> the, the you know, in that animated series universe, there's reason because you know that Bruce Wayne bone Lois Lane when he was visiting Metropolis in the Batman Superman movie. Oh, he movie. did! Like, oh, he like, come he on, stole he totally Lois stole Lane Stoops that. girl. Like, I can see how he was so you... pissed off that whole movie. Yes. Are you saying are you, which movie are you talking the, about? The, the animated, Superman? the original yeah. animated movie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I, that's one of the coolest Batman Superman movies ever ever i that. love i love when batman just has the gall to like throw superman over his shoulder and superman just shoulder checks him into the wall yeah and he goes like across the bar and that mm-hmm. was it that was yeah. a batman versus superman in that episode yeah 
There you go. And but uh, <laughs> real quick, I know we talked about it already, but uh, Freddie Williams as Terry McGinnis, like, I mean, you, what a great yeah. he works. Will, it's, Will, yeah. Will Friedle. Will Friedle, I'm sorry. Will Friedle, yeah. It's, Will Friedle was one of those things that's like, it was kind of like. I was about to say, they, Freddie Williams is a comic artist. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, my bad. Uh, it's kind of like when they caught when they casted uh, Heath Ledger as Joker. You kind of look at it and go, yeah. "That's the guy that's Ron Stoppable, or maybe Ron mm-hmm. Kim Possible is after." But you go, "The guy from Boy Meets World." Okay, you yeah. know, like yeah. it was yeah. like Heath Ledger. It's like ten things I hate about you, guy. Okay, yeah. like right. you know, we'll back see. when it was announced. Like when you watch Terry, but like none of that comedy goes into Terry McGinnis. It's like it works. He's yeah. got the he's got the youth and like the. Mm-hmm sense of like responsibility that he's learning and right i'd like to see them i'd like to see him come back as like i want a batman beyond adaptation either in a game or movie or something oh, and i get that There's yeah very yeah. soon yeah. Uh, one, one more one more thing back to kevin conroy batman batman's like best like kevin conroy's best like clap back to superman <laughs> was in the there's superman batman I think it was called Apocalypse, where the ones the animated movie where they first find Supergirl. Yeah, and like Supergirl doesn't know how to control yeah. her powers, and she yeah. like torches Batman's computer in the in the Batcave, and Superman's like, <laughs> "Oh, it's okay. She doesn't know how to control her." He goes, "My cousin doesn't know how to control her powers," and Batman goes, "Your cousin just torched fifty thousand dollars worth of hardware." And Superman, <laughs> Superman in response, he goes, "Ah, oh, just send me the bill." And Batman looks at him, he goes, "On a reporter's salary." Yeah. Right. And then he owns the Daily Planet too, so yeah. kind of pays right. him out as well. Yeah, he owns oh, he owns man. the Daily Planet, and he own Bruce Wayne also owns the apartment building that uh, Clark Kent and Lois Lane live lives in. I think that was like a wedding gift to them. He like, <laughs> gave them an apartment in the oh comics. Right, right. That's pretty good. Uh, he just um, owns everything. Um, yeah. Well, then honestly, so pff, I mean, I that's think we're all. Christian this... Bale. At this point, this is when Batman gets actually pretty serious, and people you know, get attached. Christian Bale became the Michael Keaton Batman for this generation. I'm just going to go out and say it. I think Christian Bale is the weakest part of the Nolan trilogy. I can actually kind of see that, but I don't want to admit it just yet. I I don't see. I think Christian Bale is acting his heart out and trying so hard, but even he admitted, I didn't get the character. I didn't nail it. The way I he, I think, I'll say he's the weakest part in The Dark Knight because, you know, he's overshadowed by the Joker. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. For I mean, you know, the Joker's been done so many times and The Dark Knight only made that, like, tenfold. Yeah. And uh, yeah. he's so bad in Dark Knight Rises. He just gives up. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's it, supposed to play it, a defeated man. But I, Yeah, <laughs> and then, you know, I enjoyed it because it – for me, it felt like it was just campy because there's so many plot holes that you're just like, it's because he's Batman. Just move on. Yeah. Because he's Batman. Yeah. Just move on. Like I'm the like, giant oh, flaming Batman up on the Batman symbol up on the bridge. You're just like, why'd you take all that time to paint that symbol up there? Because I'm Batman. Yeah. It's like, why did you just light the ice on fire that they're standing on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never thought of that. Yeah. I mean, the movie's not. Up. You know, <laughs> the movie's not terrible. I just wish there was more actual Batman. That's the thing. And yeah, then there's yeah. the, uh, there's what other, uh, anybody who ever tells me like Christian Bale is the best Batman. I'm just like, you need to watch that scene where he gets Bane up and he's like, after he breaks his mask and he's like interrogating him. Look at the way his mouth is moving. He's just I like, did. Well, no, yeah. his voice gets worse yeah. and worse each movie. Like I yeah. thought it would get better and it just, and then by the, the end of the trilogy, you're just like, dude, just stop. Just I will up. say this though. I will say this though. Um, those villains in um, the third movie, they don't get enough credit because I'm sitting there watching the movie and I'm just like, okay, they're about to blow up the bomb and that's going to take out the city. But I'm like, they're still there. They're not trying to leave. Yeah. No, they're it's trying to take everybody out fine. with them. Yeah, they're perfectly fine with dying with this bomb. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that <laughs> takes a whole new serious yeah. tone right yeah. there. They like, did a whole like, no man's land thing, which was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that that was it was no man's land, uh nightfall, and I think there's another one that they that they adapted to. <clears throat> but I thought the 
I don't know. I Christian Bale to me is just yeah, he's trying, but I never really thought he was a great Bruce Wayne or a or really that good of a Batman either. And I I think a lot of it too was I don't I don't like the Dark Knight trilogy suits either. Oh yes, I was just waiting to say that. You know I, I don't care for the suits very much. I you don't like see him. the bat symbol. He also doesn't really do much detective work. Yeah, no. Like he does a except like, for the second movie. Yeah, the Dark like, Knight he does. The bullet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like he's analyzing yeah. the bullet in the wall, and that's like literally it. Yeah. But the Dark Knight, in my opinion, is legitimately a great film. Everything about that film is right. It, yeah. Batman yeah. Begins is the best one. Yeah. But Heath Ledger mm. makes Dark Knight better. Yeah. See, the thing with the Dark Knight is people are just so just in love with that movie that there are some pretty stupid flaws that I think people really ignore about that movie. Like the ending ruins okay, that so movie for me. Fair enough. Where he's just like, I killed those people. I'm just like, blame the Joker. The yeah, Joker killed, they did have to go to. Yeah, the Joker has murdered like half the population of Gotham. Just blame uh, him. G- Gordon's like he can handle it. He is the Dark Knight. And then yeah, and, uh, I thought what it was gonna be was just like he's gonna keep being Batman, but like the police are gonna be after him. And then in the next movie, he's just like I quit. I'm like Batman yeah. wouldn't quit. Well, dude, yeah, that's what pissed me off about that third one is that we got the like the shittiest, most wimpy Batman to just be like, all right, you know, okay, dude, he became Batman because his parents died in front of him, and then his girlfriend dies. He's like, I give up, I can't do this, and it's like, yeah. dude, death is your fucking motivation. Like, he why would you quit for eight such years? Such an like, idiot when it came to the whole Rachel thing. To him, like, dude, she doesn't fucking like you. Rachel, yeah. right? Yeah. Rachel, she Move was gonna on. wait for me, Alfred. I'm like, I think she was giving you pretty heavy vibes as she was moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, those you're, movies are you're good. Bruce and, Wayne, you can get whoever you want. <laughs> but those movies, doesn't... Uh, Rachel, those movies... he dated the entire ballerina team. Like, come on. Yeah, he did the whole ballet. Yeah, that's um, really that's really doing a lot to win her over. Like, you know, like I'm out here just having an orgy on my boat with all these uh, Russian ballerinas. Oh, like, man. Christian Bell. See, Batman Begins is legitimately a well-written film. Yes, I know yes. it is a very tight script with everything yeah. very clean. Like everything's clean and paced well. And and Liam I had was. friends tell me that that movie studied in some screenwriting classes because it's just that good. Yeah, that's cool. It it's got a great origin story for origin story we've heard a million times, and it's got yep. you know awesome like uh, Rachel Ghoul is amazing, you know with um, yeah, Liam Neeson. And the fake out. Yeah, you know, the fake and the out. fake out. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna play with your expectations. Although I would have yeah. kind of preferred Ken Watanabe actually be Rachel. Yeah, that would have been dope. Ken yeah, Watanabe is he's such a good actor. Yeah. And then yeah. what's his name? Cillian Murphy or something? Yeah, he was originally ad- auditioned to be Batman. Yeah, he was a good scar. He was Scarface. He was a good uh, scar uh, scarecrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I wish Harvey Dent was in Batman Begins though. I yeah. Want, I wanted that to setup. Bring it all together. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then it, it it feels rushed in Dark Knight because you got to introduce him and then make him have his downfall. Right. Well, what and sucks then, is that the tri- the third movie was supposed to have like a uh, <clears throat> team up with Batman and the Joker in a sense, and I mean Heath Ledger's death just through that whole movie into like yeah i mean it's it's not like they you know could account for that of course yeah. it's, it's an unfortunate yeah. situation that the studios like we still got to make a movie even though a pinnacle character and actor have kind of i gone. heard that i heard that like harvey dent wasn't supposed to come two face until the third movie and then they had to reshoot it because heath ledger died or something because it was supposed to be the joker uh... was supposed to be on the stand in in the courtroom and then scar him or like something it doesn't make a whole lot of sense mm. with the timeline, though. Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. But, not right. you know, looking back at it, Christian Bell really isn't <clears throat> that... He's not terrible, but he's really not that good as a Batman when, no. when you really do yeah. look back. You don't want to admit it. I think that's what it is. Yeah. You know, because I mean, there's a lot of good... good. It's he's filmed serviceable. Well. Yeah. yeah. Serviceable. Yeah. You know, but for those movies... I don't know. And something I there is something I would like to put to rest about the Dark Knight is that there was always these like 
apparently Jared Leto heard too much of this, but there's always like these stories about how Heath Ledger never broke character and mm -hmm. he was always, always talking to and himself. Was he was a joker twenty four seven. Yes, Michael J. White spawn yes. gamble in the yes. movie. He said, like, yeah, all that is false. It was made up by the they said he was hella nice to everybody on set. He'd yeah. he'd like joke around with everybody. He'd ask everyone, he's like, What do you think of that? Was that okay? And like Yeah. Yeah, he said like the media ran with this whole narrative that oh he the Joker killed him or whatever that he gave his life for the role. He goes, no, he had already moved on from the Joker by the time he passed mm. away and all that. He wasn't like that on set to anybody. He was really nice. Oh wow! But um, uh, one thing that I'll say that movie it made me laugh. The Dark Knight. I mean, I laughed hard at one scene. It wasn't supposed to be funny because. Um, when Rachel is in the in the chair strapped up with all the bombs and Harvey Dent's there and they got the radio so they can hear each other. And they're sitting there trying to, you know, comfort each other. Oh, I know they're coming for you, baby. Da 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 da. Don't worry about me. It's like I know, but I want them to save you instead. Da, da, da. And then Batman bursts through. You hear Harvey like, What are you doing? The look on her face as she realized Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, they're not saving me. Yo, uh, I yeah, <laughs> roll it. I was like, "Be careful what you wish for." Yeah, gone. that girl was gone. She oh. got that whole building got obliterated. Yeah, yes. yeah. And then no there was a, from that. there was a, that's a ballsy move though, killing off the love interest, which is something yeah. we need to do more in superhero movies. I would say so. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, no, I think they've done enough of that. But then there's another thing I wanted to mention about the Dark Knight though that was. Um. Okay. Yeah, I got nothing. But yeah, no, I. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Christian Bale is all that great. He's a great actor. I. He was giving it his all. You could tell he was, but he just really couldn't get it right. I don't think. I don't think he was that great of a Bruce Wayne either. Uh, he. Yeah, I could see it now in retrospect, but he's still yeah. not terrible. No, he's not. No. Not at all. Well, I mean, this Does these he, three know, movies did what Batman and Batman Returns did. It switched the genre back to something dark and we yeah. got a new idea yeah. of Batman because then it went back to it, comic books and it goofy. affected yeah and it, it affected all comic books not even just mm -hmm. Batman or DC yeah everything across the board I don't think yeah. the Marvel movies would exist as well as they do without those movies right? yeah they it, helped open the doors yeah yeah because <laughs> I mean before that I mean there wasn't really like every I'm so sick and tired everybody just like overly loving the the toby Maguire spider-man movies like oh my god like i like oh my god i love them but i'm just like guys they're not that great like spider-man 2 no. legitimately is a good film it is spider-man 2 is but yeah, there are other ones that like, one. so that one's not per that one's not perfect still Plus, like, I, I always oh, said God. that, like, I'm, I'm never be satisfied with an on-screen version of Spider-Man until I get that 2001 <laughs> PS1 Rhino Romano Spider-Man. Yeah. That, like, Todd well, McFarlane era Spider-Man. They keep Spider -Man. on trying to do that early Stan Lee, Steve Ditko stuff when it's just like, yeah, that's the it's aesthetic so and that's out. what we got out. But, like, th those aren't really good comics either. You know what I mean? Like, they're, not, uh, not yeah. the best. they're, they're drawn real well. And, like, but, like, overall, they're not what they're we have fun, today. but they're not deep. Yeah, Spider you know, Man is those two, those three Sam Raimi movies are just like those first two Batman movies we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't age well. Yeah, they yeah, don't age well dude, you watch them on Blu ray, they're rough. And yeah. Jesus, there's parts that work, but you know, it's it's just like any other superhero movie when you look back at it, same exact thing. Yeah, you know, right. like to your they, point, I mean, again, the soup is what gets you, you know what I mean? That's yeah. so yeah. awesome, and the nostalgic, yeah. like. You were eight years old and watching a Spider-Man movie. Like, how could you? Not yeah, well, you were gonna love it. Yeah, but um, and, uh, I feel like from... a lot of a lot of people are like that with the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, I mean, I still stand by Batman Begins. If if Dark Knight like didn't have Heath Ledger, yeah. Batman Begins is the best one. Yeah, but I like the suit. But what I was saying though yeah, too is I like, like the Dark Knight suit. Um, yeah, like the 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 dark knight trilogy really did open the door for like the mcu and everything that we're getting now because like before that you know you had like the raimi spider-man movies which were they're a lot of fun and then you had uh actually you know what nah blade blade, <laughs> blade actually yeah blade made blade, it happen yeah. spider-man and x-men yeah they the but door. they thought it's... batman they could do the same mm -hmm. and yeah. that it's really blade because the first x-men movie is dope 
I don't like yeah. the X Men movies. I just don't. I'm not. I can't get into. The I, first two. First two, um, right? Yeah. yeah they're first good, two, yeah. but they're just kind of bland. They feel very bland and empty to me. <clears throat> mm, I gotta go look yeah. back. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Because they don't have big set pieces. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's not even that. I just. I want them to look. I like. I was like, yeah. I want the yellow spandex, and they're making fun of it. And the movie was like, that's what I want. I don't want these like leather S and M costumes that you're that's all wearing. That's what I want. Back then, <laughs> back, right back then, that was like you know that was a style back then. You know, dark yeah. and like you know again coming from uh, coming from Blade. You know, what I'm saying everything was black and monochromatic, and then you know yeah. but that works for Blade though. Thing. That works so much better for Blade, though. But anyway, moving yeah. on. Who's next? Uh, uh, New Frontier. Oh, uh, New Frontier. Two thousand eight. Yeah. Okay. So New Frontier, and then there's also uh, Under the Red Hood and The Dark Knight Returns. So. And then uh, Batman uh, Crisis yeah, on Two Earths. Okay. So it's Peter we'll- Weller, um, Roger Craig Smith, all those Jeremy, random voice actors. Jeremy Sisto. I love the New Frontier Batman because he does the yeah. Golden Age and into the Silver Age Batman, which is like one of my favorites because I love Purple Glove Batman and I yes. love that outfit. I think that was too cool to represent. And it was a great adaptation from that huge. Have you guys read the New Frontier? I want to. Holy I have. God. It's been a while, but yeah, I've read it. Me too. I have it in single issues. I have like uh, uh, the trade as well, and it is a phenomenal <laughs> book. Like it's it's rest, in peace. Yeah. Well. rest in peace, Darwin Cook. Darwin, Darwin Cook. He was. I wish I got a sketch or met him. He was one of my. He was like Daniel O'Neill, a guy yeah. that was always on the top of my list. Never got to meet him. Um, but damn, and I love that movie. Um, Christ he drew the hottest world. Wonder Woman. All of <laughs> dude, his Catwoman's dope. Like I know um crisis on two earths i love that movie because it kind of starts easing in that multiverse aspect you know for the right. first time that we see in any of this and the multiverse in dc is so confusing so anything that can like break that down and make it understandable is welcome right. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, was that um is that the one where he has to go against owl man yeah. yeah 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 owl man has a, that- owl man has like a chilling line before he dies in that movie who cares? Um, yeah. <laughs> it was like, so, it was yeah, like you know, the that... difference between you and me? Uh, yeah. You looked into the abyss and uh, like you turned back Blanks. or something like that. Or you got scared. You in the abyss yeah. And you blinked. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. That's what it was. But then uh, I love that. I mean, I love that one as well. It's a great movie. Uh, they have Toy Man or something like that. The, the modern Toy Man where he's like a kid from Japan making stuff or something. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you get the first composite Superman Batman because uh, it's a robot. Yeah. Um, and then there's, uh, Flashpoint there's, Bruce, Paradox. there's Bruce Greenwood and, uh, and uh, Batman Under the Red Hood and he did really good. Yeah. Oh, and he did the voice for Young Justice, did he not? Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, and he, I love that guy? Batman. Yep, uh-huh. okay. dude, I love the Batman and Young Justice. I think, and that's one of, yeah. dude, that goes right up there with Justice League and the anime series. Like, dude, yep. Young Justice is dope. Nothing and, but the mission. That's all he cared about was just yes. the mission. <laughs> I, I never saw Young that. Justice. So I, I can't that say. what. That dude, line, I know, that, I know. That line Brandon. he says when he when like Wonder Woman's oh. bitching out a uh, Shazam for being too young, yeah, and yeah, and she, and she like tries to call out like Batman, and he she's just like you took you took uh, Dick Grayson and Robin. like try to yeah try to make it yeah try to make him into like at like twelve years old yeah a crime fighter at twelve years old she goes did you she goes you just wanted to make him into you or. She goes, did you just want to make him into you or make him turn out like you? And Batman goes, I did that so he wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And oh, the whole man. room just goes silent. The fact that <sighs> Batman isn't scared of anybody. It doesn't matter what you want. Wonder Woman could beat him up and kill him in like two seconds flat. Yeah. Like, it, would be, it would be nothing to her. And it's ho- he has no fear. It's mm-hmm. hilarious that Batman has hooked up with wonder woman oh yeah right uh, and on some multiverse everyone's hooked up with someone but it's just so right. funny that batman's just like yeah i know that like you have the power to like lift up a planet but uh you know but i'm batman but i'm batman but i'm batman but we also have uh let me see what's his name um 
Kevin McKidd as uh, Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. 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 And that was a lot one of, of my favorites. Dude, there's so many voice actors to keep track of when it comes to this because so many people have played. And Batman's in everything, so they always got to get a voice actor for him. Yeah, Batman's kind of <laughs> oversaturated in some areas of DC. Every well, area of DC, the comics, the movies. Oh, well, God, I mean, in I'm a sense, like, like a you have a very mainstream voice for the most animated films. It's like Jason Omar and Kevin Conroy. It's some of these yeah. one-off yeah. films that they just had to get a certain vibe for that's not within a universe. That yeah. That's the only time we have a different Batman, which makes sense because it's a yeah. different yeah. universe, you know? It does. Um, yeah. But when they shape one, it, it does stay consistent. Because then Jason Omar <laughs> takes over Batman for a while. Um, yeah. For, for that whole series that whole series like except mm. for roger craig um during hey, hey shout Red out Sun. to my boy <laughs> uh. roger craig smith yeah that, that was i just saw that one recently because of this <clears throat> universe and that's a pretty good movie i'm not gonna lie which one yeah, is that one to check it out. uh superman red sun oh, oh yeah that. superman red sun was pretty good i read the book a long time ago we did an episode on i it. never oh, read it comics you i need to it it's uh it's interesting and then i know, uh, I know the concept and then there is uh what's a peter weller robocop peter weller. i mean as an older yeah. batman it makes sense yeah and i love and, like and, and peter weller it. just is one of the, he's underrated i don't think he ever gets enough credit you know your move creep <laughs> yeah your yeah move. right uh, walk I, just, again. I just watched those robocop movies recently to like get some inspiration for a story and dude they're freaking awesome i know those um, 80s action movies are so good so violent Yes, dude. Yeah, love it. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. There's that something about Robo like, Cop. oh, yeah. dude, that first <laughs> that scene. Yeah. Like, I saw it as a kid, yeah. and that destroyed me. Like, it, it haunted me for a while. There's something about those mo- those action movies, though, dude. from like the late '80s, early '90s, that were so good because there wasn't any CGI. It was like it was real, all like prosthetics. It was, yeah, it was like squibs and actual explosions and everything. And oh. it just, I hate the way action movies look now. They're I don't know too... if you remember that robot hey. in Robocop, because that's, that's, oh man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That yeah. The, that is the best, that, uh, that, the best Ray Harry Hall- animated. I think it was stop motion. Something like that. Yeah, had yeah, been stop motion. Motion. Yeah, Ray Harryhausen would have been turned it over in his grave. <laughs> Well, there's also uh, Michael C. Hall, who was uh, the Gods and Monsters uh, Batman. As oh, well. yeah. And I never a... saw that one either. I read the book. Oh, yeah. oh Rich, yeah, that's a dope movie. I love oh, the whole fourth I, background on that. Like, I thought that was really I, uh, interesting. I read the, the Batman uh, spinoff where he's in the Morbius chair or whatever. Mobius chair. Oh, I haven't read the Batman spinoff for that. Yeah, it's oh, the one where he like like sits in the chair, right? No, no, no. Oh, this no, is, I'm mixing uh, it up. This is the animated movie, Gods and Monsters, where there's like a me- here it, Batman is a uh, Kirk Langstrom. It's not oh, Bruce Wayne. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking You're of thinking else. of the Jeff Johns run on Justice League, where he steps in the chair and discovers the three Jokers and all that. Yeah. Okay. How do you guys feel um, about that concept that like the Joker's something kind of like Pennywise that he's just always been a part of Gotham? I'm fine. I'm just. I just hope it's not like super. I don't want it to be super over the top. For being I don't honest. like. I. I. I kind of like the Joker just being a nobody. Yeah, like the, that's the, the thing. exact opposite him, of Bruce Wayne. I don't need him to be a supernatural yeah. being. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, I think now we could probably move on to. Huh? Mr. Affleck. I was gonna say, in that Batman doesn't want to kill the Joker because he's afraid they'll send something worse than him. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that's strange. I don't know. <clears throat> but um, then I think you know Affleck is next. Then yeah, Affleck, we're on to Ben Affleck. Yeah. yeah, this is. I think we'll wrap this up on Ben Affleck. No, no, All we right. still got one more to talk about. Who, Will Arnett? <laughs> Will oh, Arnett. there's that too. Yeah, yeah, Will Arnett's dope. Okay, yeah, he's he's yeah. great. Lego Batman, just keep so, him there. Yeah, uh, he's he's awesome. Ooh. I love Will Arnett as Batman. Yeah, I think just, he, he sums up this the perfect caricature of Batman. Yeah, it, yeah, the caricature of Batman. That's the thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I, you know, there's some honorable mentions, but Ben Affleck is pretty much, in my opinion, on a physicality level. I that warehouse yes. scene and Batman yeah. versus Superman. Yes. Oh my so god, so good. That I mean, is, I don't even that man. The the there's a few scenes in Batman v Superman because in Justice League they fucked that all up with Joss Whedon. Yep. Um, he yep. uh he tried to make him an Iron Man and it was just no it's not no. a character yeah um, yeah but in Batman v Superman there is so much like it was haunting like that was the closest we got to Batman actually being like a nightmare 
Mm-hmm. Dude, yeah. we're one of the people. Brandon and I were talking about it one time. He's not hiding in the door frame. Or we were doing this with Danny. He is the door frame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you want, you know? Like, yeah. Like, I do stand by. He looks awkward without the trunks. The suit oh, looks yeah. weird. Right. I was saying yeah. that. Yeah. DC's got a long ways to go with, like, they got a lot of catching up to do to the MCU when it comes to like designing better yeah. superhero suits. Yeah, like I, I don't, not a huge fan of the whole I like, DCEU suits. I like the, um, cause it's like it's like Ben Affleck is wearing armor, but then there's just a, another layer on top of that. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. I, I like, like that, that version. Yeah. Of the just, if you look at it, he has like these brass knuckles in the gloves too, and it's like, yeah, this dude is like not to be fucked with. Yeah, he's ready yeah. for war. You know, like right. he's yeah, not like, joking anymore. Yeah. I, and that's cool. We got the first older, experienced Batman, and I think that's what makes yeah. him so unique. We're not starting from ground zero like we typically See, do. Yeah. I'm really split on the whole on that whole thing because I feel like <clears throat> with this Batman, I because for one, we just saw an older Batman in The Dark Knight Rises. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the Dark Knight trilogy really did hinder the DCEU with with its timing, but mm-hmm. I just I think that they really should have done at least a. A, a Batman movie that where he was a little younger to start off before they did Batman v Superman. So, so we get to know this Batman. To build the character, yeah. 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 Well, and, we would have known him more if they would have done that Deathstroke movie, which, I mean, supposedly. Yeah. I mean, I mean that rumor was shot down by James Gunn, but, like, it could. That would have been dope. Yeah. yeah. I think it, that, you know, if they it. did it, because, like, I mean, Robert Downey <clears throat> Jr. was, like, almost 50 when he first started out as iron man so i'm just like yeah he's in, he was in his 40s easily or late yeah. 30s but, so i mean you just could have like that's died. a less a less physical role too yeah he just yeah, like, steps in I, and it's cgi <laughs> i feel like you could have like you know done some makeup work on ben affleck and just had him just be like okay this is batman like in his more earlier days like when he first meets the joker or something yeah. or like a detective story kind of like what they're doing right now and like, or like, have, make like an Arkham Origins movie or something like that, mm-hmm. and yeah. have Robin already, and and then so that way, once we get to BVS, like I don't know, I just I was kind of mad that they started out with an old Batman. Well, that's it, what I liked is that they just threw you into the mythos, like I no know, no yeah. origin story, and but yeah. they flash back to it, which I don't need, you know. Which yeah, I was fine either. with. I was fine with because they did it in the credits. They got in and out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they it's died. just it's, you know, and it was really well died. shot. Yeah, it was, it's just yeah. you've it's like Spider Man's origin story, it's <clears throat> tragic and it's terrible. But in the in terms know. of entertainment, we've seen it so many times, right? And like the games, the movies, the comics. I praise the recent Spider Man movies because we don't, we just get hinted at Uncle Ben, we just get like hinted at his like beginnings, like he's already <clears throat> established. And that's what a, want. Uncle Ben needs a picture or a throwaway line, though. Like they're long overdue, it's just saying, I miss Uncle Ben or something. Yeah, well, yeah. I like the crypticness about it because it's like, man, we know. <clears throat> See, like, I. But, with me with the Batman yeah. thing though, like I'm still waiting for my Batman movie where Batman just is trash. I want that Batman movie, like Batman Year One, where like the whole like Batman Year One is great because that whole book Batman is just screwing up well, every other issue. If they yeah. do that, he has to have the cloth suit. Yes, and yeah. that's I'm okay yeah. with it then. Like he's he, getting he shot. To... In the... <clears throat> like yeah, everything exactly. he does in that oh, movie. Yeah. He gets he shot just, in the leg. Mm-hmm. He over tried to rescue a cat. Yeah, from gunfire. Like, he's trying to stop someone from like bashing a window in uh, yeah. to like rob a store or something, and then he gets stabbed in the ribs or something. You yeah, know? yeah. They, and, those kid, those teenagers beat the shit out of him on that roof. Yeah. Well, and, and that was my, almost made. Did you see the costume <clears throat> designs and everything for that year one ish movie? Yeah, yeah. But that was, was supposed yeah. to be like Alfred was. He was supposed to be like a street kid. Yeah, oh, wow. but Dude, like I said. Uh, yeah, Go ahead. I was going to say, like, going back to uh, Ben Affleck, there's two moments, though, I really enjoyed outside of the um, of the warehouse scene. And I was like, okay, this is Batman. This is what I want to see in my, in my, uh, in my Batman. Is uh, when you first get introduced to him, he's in the corner. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah he's the door frame. Yeah. And, then, like, <laughs> and it's like, Jesus Christ. And he's just like, you know, scurrying across the, the ceiling. And it's like, yeah, fuck that. Even the girls is like, no, nope, we're we're staying in here. I, yeah, I was yeah, up there with yeah. That guy. Um, but that, and then my favorite part of that whole movie, Lex Luthor gets his head shaved. He gets arrested. 
So that means he has to like go through trial, then he has to go through sentencing, and then he has to get, you know, actually get sent to prison. He gets all that, he gets comfortable, and then Batman shows up. This mm-hmm. dude did not forget about you at all. He waited. He took yep. his time. Yeah, he good point. He, that he, is a good point. Just, in that scene. he just waits. He's just right there. That look, the red, mm-hmm. and you can't see his face. You can't even see his mouth. It's like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. Well, I'm telling you, dude, the Snyder Cut's going to be dope. I don't give a fuck what any of you guys say. I'm so <laughs> fucking hyped for that to see, like, the real. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, too. like, was... we're going to get the real fucking Batman we've been waiting for from Alf Lake at that point. There's this, there's Batman this a couple... Superman, it was a much better movie when you saw the three-hour cut. Yes, yes, dude. It's rough yes. to get through it. It's rough to get through that film because there's scenes I, that drag, though. I, like, I yeah. still, yeah. I can't do it with that movie. I just no. It's we're just, gonna do a commentary into Paul City Comics just because he said that, Danny. Yeah. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> do you well, gotta make you me guys, sit through that movie again? You, yes. you guys, you guys gotta be ready for the grand one of them all when we do yeah. the massive commentary. We're lead up to oh, it. God. Yeah. It's just, yeah. See, the thing about it, there's a couple dope. things that I got mad about, though, is because people were, like, complaining that Ben Affleck was drinking in the Justice League movie. They said, Batman would never do that. Whedon fucked it up. Snyder understood Batman better. Batman gets a bottle of pills and downs it with a bottle of whiskey in, ba- in BVS when he wakes up. Yeah, like, he's in pain. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. This His is body's old breaking man. down. Dude, but they I, did that, yeah. like, in Venom. That was Denny O'Neill. Yeah. I know. I know. Bam! I, I still Ooh. like that in the comics that he never drank or anything. He's just like, yeah, I don't drink. He always had a ginger ale. Yeah, uh, ginger ale. <laughs> but like on a again on a pure physicality, when he's kicking ass and when he's got no regrets or no remorse, that is nothing. I don't Bulls. care. I like to think I'm the. Uh, Speaking of remorse, oh, dude, the Snyder yeah. Cut had a whole scene where that part with Wonder Woman and Justice League, where he's like, "I'm getting ready to die." in this fight oh yeah i'm not gonna come back yeah. and that's like that's cool you see evolution in the character and that's what i liked yeah. or we would have liked or will like right <laughs> I, I really enjoyed in batman v superman the the funniest moment man um is when um superman shows up and lex luther's like oh i don't see you with the head of batman I guess, you know, we're going to have to kill your mom. Blah, blah, blah. And then the phone rings. And he's mm-hmm. like, and he said like some little quippy joke about like Gotham Roast or something like that. Um, break the bad news. And you just hear Batman. I'd rather do the breaking in person. Yeah. But look on his face. And it's like, yeah, that ass whooping is coming. That, <laughs> that ass whooping is coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I love, that's something Christian Bale couldn't do either. And it's just. He wasn't menacing. I, I, uh, Kevin Conroy is the only other one who's been able to do it, but. Ben Affleck's the first live-action Batman where you felt the fury and anger coming off of him. That's what I'm saying. I'm Uh, telling you, give me the Ben Affleck Batman and just have Kevin Conroy doing the voice when he's not being augmented or, you know, when he's just being menacing. (laughs) Just have him overdub. Like, I don't even care if it looks awkward. If you just have him overdub as Bruce Wayne, like, (laughs) that is my... Ben Affleck is Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say... um... That's my problem with the... The like the way they rushed everything with the DCEU well, is that we never get to see Bruce Wayne enough being Bruce Wayne. It's like he's always well, yeah. in his Batman personality. I wanted to see him more around crowds and everything. We see well, a little bit say, of it when he yeah that the the Russian um, mock up fight thing that they were doing. Yeah, when he meets up with uh, KG Beast, who you don't even know is KG Beast until like <laughs> you do some research and it's like oh they just kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they like okay. he's a throwaway Snyder, Snyder acts like he's so it's smart. So like smart. I put all these little things in the movies for everybody yeah. to see. I'm like, bro, you you need to give us a like. Not everybody's Next gonna thing, know I that. Will, I will say about Snyder, he is amazing when it comes to visually. Like he's an amazing cinematographer. Like basically. yes, he is. Yeah, like visually, he is, he knows like, action. Like, point. There's yeah. yeah, and he knows action. Like that visually, fight it's just, in it's Smallville. Hard. Yeah. That was yeah, a great it's, fight. It's hard not to. It's hard to, to to think of anybody else that really compares to him when it comes to like action and like visually the 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 beauty that you see right. on the screen. Right. Story wise, that yeah. is not his. That is not his strong he, suit. He can't write yeah. and he can't he can't direct a scene where people are just talking. 
<laughs> like, there has know, to be an explosion that goes off eventually. Yeah, it's just crumbling. like, you know what? Man, the, he, the, the ones he has with uh, Alfred, I, I enjoy those. Oh, yeah, those are great. Yeah. Those are, See, the Batman v Superman movie proves that Snyder only wanted to direct a Superman or a Batman movie. Like he and yeah. they gave him yeah. Superman. That's why I think yeah. that yeah. he tried to make Superman into Batman. This is like it's obvious that's all he's wanted the whole time. It's just like I just want a Batman movie, but they mm-hmm. gave me Superman yeah. instead. Yeah. Right. Well, which you know what? In his defense, I love Man of Steel. What do you oh boy! You just you just declared war yeah. on me. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I, I have. I where's my it. Superman book at? I said <laughs> Where is it? Damn I it! it. I Honestly, right. that, that's the first movie that actually gave us Superman, not Superboy. Yeah. yeah, I will say that. Gonna, Justin, you just invited yourself to the Man of Steel commentary. Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh See, boy! I just say well, the best Superman episode. I still stand by. I think Tim Daly and Christian Bale blow Henry Cavill Superman out of the water, and that's not Henry I, Cavill's fault because I think Henry I Cavill know. is perfect. The same thing with Henry Cavill is the same thing with Batman Affleck. You need to write him correctly. If you just give him a good yeah. script, exactly. they'd be amazing. And you right. know what? Josh Whedon did a good job of that. With did Superman? He? With Superman? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, at the end of Justice League, yeah. That, that yeah, was true. Superman. Yeah, that, that was that Superman. Yeah. Yeah. And that. I thought that I thought that that Henry Cavill did great in Man of Steel. He was great. It was just the writing and the direction <laughs> wasn't superman oh dude at the end of man of steel when they're like uh we need to take you in um, for being like uh an actual alien and he was like i was raised and in, in, um where's smallville at again oh can he was like i grew up in kansas that's about as american as it gets yeah he's, he's, he's like i see you guys spying on me and yeah, then all that right. he's like yeah i grew up in kansas that's as american as it gets uh, yeah, he blew up and, the drone. He was like, "That's a two million dollar drone." It was. What? It was. That's, yeah. why, that's why I can't buy the whole thing of that guy, that general being Martian Manhunter. You know what? That's well, definitely no. a decision that was made after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's but the same. Remember that uh, Martian Manhunter t- takes over someone else's personality. You know what I mean? So wow. it's one oh, of those. Yeah. But also. Somebody did. Uh, they they showed me a scene that it kind of made sense that he might be Mar- Martian Manhunter. It's when Superman gets arrested, you know, and then um, he's talking to Lois Lane, and then they're talking through him through the um, the 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 glass, you know, mm-hmm. the uh, the two way mirror or whatever. And he, he breaks the cuffs off, and then he walks to the mirror. Everybody else backs up, but not not Lieutenant. He's yeah. the only one that was still there looking at him face to face. Everybody else kind of moved to the back of the room. Nice. Yeah. All right. That is cool. Yeah, I can but see it. Anyways, back to well, Ben Affleck. I think that yeah. he yeah, I think he had he was the best part of BVS, which isn't saying much, but <laughs> you know, I think that he did a really good job. I felt the passion that Ben Affleck really wanted to make this work. I just think that as much as Snyder wanted to direct Superman, he still really didn't understand, or Batman, he still really didn't understand where to go. And his his chemistry with Jeremy Irons was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, just, if you could dub the Kevin Conroy onto Ben Affleck, it'd be perfect. Like, I stand by that. I'm happy with Ben Affleck's voice. I I loved his voice. I am too. I'm just saying Kevin Conroy. That's fear. Yeah. Yeah, like don't get me wrong, I I love it. I'm fine with it too, but just you know we all agree Kevin Conroy's voice like I know he is it's hard man. to beat. Well, it's but, it though, um, in that movie storytelling wise, there's so much that um, Zack Snyder said about Batman in like other interviews and like you know other stuff he said on social media and stuff that you can see if you look really close, but you know he doesn't do a good job of showing it in the storytelling sense. Right. The fact that Batman was mad that Robin died, so he broke the Joker's teeth. That's why he has to wear those mm-hmm. um, uh, the, the, grill. the silver yeah. grill. And it's like, okay, that would have been nice to see. Exactly. You know and that comes nice into the whole actually. thing that they were rushing to get to Justice League. Yeah. yeah. And then um, Batman killing people. It's like, well, Batman is so desperate to stop Superman. That's why he's crossed that line of killing. It's like that would have been mm-hmm. nice to see, you right? Know, yeah, in the movie, but and, you know they didn't give it to us. Yeah, you know I just think that it's 
they rushed into this too quick, and I I think that he deserved his own movie beforehand. And we deserve to see Robin die. Like I think that's uh, at least it's yeah, a they just, yeah they just yeah they hint at it, and dude. And that's supposed that to be Dick Grayson thing. that dies. Unfortunately, like yes. I was like, what? that pissed me off. Yeah, I was like, listen, I'm, I was riding with Zack Snyder for a long time. Mm-hmm. I was like, nope, that's it, we're done. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been um, I. I would have liked to actually see Night Nightwing should have been a BVS at least a yeah, cameo it, just like hey yeah, how you doing Bruce something. is checking on you. Yeah. If this is an older Alfred Batman, called me and said you were tripping, man. Like yeah, exactly. And like, what about what? How cool would that movie be if Oracle was in it, but you never you never see her, you just hear her voice. You just hear her voice. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd, That'd be cool. And the big problem that I I hear a lot of casual fans complain about the the DC movies is just like we don't understand half of it. Because like they didn't take time to build this universe like they should have. Yeah, what yeah. you mean there? And they just so make really the awkward. Has... De- they make awkward decisions about how like uh, like Jimmy Olsen just dies. Yeah, like, yeah. You're like you're like, oh, that's Jimmy Olsen. You know, again, right? And then casting, casting like that. So apparently, the original casting they wanted um, Lex Luthor to be Brian Cranston. Everybody Zach did. Decided mm-hmm. Zach. Snyder once he had a um a lunch with um what was what's that what's that uh Jesse Eisenberg Zuckerberg Jesse Eisenberg man he was like oh, Zuckerberg okay, I'll, I'll go with this. <laughs> yeah Zuckerberg he's like oh, okay I'll go with this guy I can um, see what they're going for they're they're trying to make Lex yeah. Luthor like a tech worker or a techie or something yeah but Lex but Luthor's supposed to be like originally uh, he was supposed to be Jimmy Olsen that would have been perfect. Oh, and he was supposed sense. to die in the beginning. It was like, that would have been a good, like, you know, shock and awe. Yeah. You have this big name actor show up. And he's like, oh, okay, that's cool. He looks like the character. All right, awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I could see that. Just shoot him right in the face. It's just, I, yeah, it, it, it works. Insane. I just well, feel like uh, oh. Snyder's just trying to be edgy in his movies. And I can yeah. feel it's like pretentious and edgy. And I'm just like, just tell a good story, bro. Yeah, would it bring this back like, back to was, Batman? Yeah, yeah. would you guys? <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. And so we keep going on tangents. Yeah, that's um, how it goes every time. I get angry. Once you hit Zack Snyder, man. That's uh, uh, it's a so, whole can of worms. To wrap this up a little bit, what do you guys think about Patterson? Um, Don't knock it till you try. Pattinson. Exactly. We haven't seen the movie. You know what I'm saying? We haven't so seen we trailers. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. just by appearance, I'm sold. I think yeah, I'm hoping to pull through, but He's we're gonna we're gonna pay one way or another to see it. We're gonna yeah, watch it more than once, whether it's terrible or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think I think to wrap this up, we should talk actor. about let's talk about like the the future Batman stuff and how we hope things are gonna go or what we think of what's happening. So like with the Patterson thing, I I'm I love the casting of the whole movie. I love that it's based that it's gonna be like a film noir in like his early mm-hmm. days, based off of the Long Halloween perfect um i don't like the suit i was hoping we would get the looks uh, a little awkward yeah yeah i mean i think, I think overall like in action yeah right. that's what i'm like excited for plus seeing the bat that's cycle and stuff for. like that that seems like they're hitting the right elements at that point yes right. yeah so and, and you know yeah i i hope he's the new dceu yeah. batman you know yeah. what i don't yeah. think they're gonna do that at all no i think they're, they're kind not. of I think I think they're gonna go in their own way because what has worked in the DCEU as far as like their movies go is been the solo films. Like right. I love yeah. Aquaman. I thought that was well, cool. yeah, they mm-hmm. they rushed Shazam. Like they made good solo movies because you know they got left alone. I yeah. nobody jumped on and I just say Shazam. get rid of Snyder and then just flashpoint to reboot it include the patterson films in the continuity <laughs> oh, reboot man. justice league keep keep henry cavill as superman and all that and have yeah, michael keaton be the older batman beyond batman yeah, and joker i think they should just ignore trying to make a universe i think that's washed i think they tried it and they failed horribly. yeah yeah just, just we'll focus unless, on solo films unless you're going to dedicate that attention to it that it needs there, yeah. there's no way it's going to need a good it. you need a good plan or two like yeah Kevin yeah, Feige. yeah. Yeah, Make exactly. Good film. True. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just keep making good films. If Suicide Squad is a good film, which you know James Gunn, these crazy group of characters, hey, why not? That, that's, right. that should be awesome. Yeah. Just make a good movie. At the and end I of think that. that that's a good 
note to end on right there. Just make a good movie, DC. Make a good movie. Start over. Yep. Admit your defeat. Right. And just exactly right. hope so, for the best. As we wrap this up right now, I think that we should just do a final thing. Who is the best Batman? Michael Keaton. All right, let's go. Ben Affleck. Right, ben Affleck. <laughs> Ben Affleck. Uh, Affleck. I have to say, uh, I, I have to say, Kevin Conroy. Yeah, Conroy. Conroy wins. Yeah, by default. Uh, I yeah. guess if you exclude the big game players like Conroy, Caden, and Affleck, like the runner-up okay. type of thing. Oh man, DJ Bader. Just Batman DJ is such a. He's yeah. bigger. He's he, Batman is literally a symbol. He is bigger. Than he is. Well, that's yeah. the thing. That's why Val Kilmer stepped out of the role after Batman and Forever because he realized that it doesn't matter who's behind the mask. It just matters about Batman. And the yeah. fact that it didn't matter who was under it, he was like, why am I going to do this? You know? So. Yeah. And because <sighs> they didn't give him enough money. Yeah. That's it. Too, too, yeah. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't want... Oh, man. He realized, he's like, oh, it's not making like, that much. Oh, they're not going to. You're right. Yeah, yeah. He's well, not getting that yeah, Top Gun money. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. I think we'll wrap it up here. So we've established that Brandon is wrong about everything with Michael uh, Keaton. Danny's talking out his ass. Ben Affleck is the best, and or Kevin Conroy. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. You will. <laughs> I'll be waiting. Uh. Thank you again, Justin, for joining us. Legitimately, yes. that was yes, awesome, dude. This thank was a great being here. conversation yeah. with you, man. Yeah, thank you all you guys for being on the show today. And, uh, you know, I am happy that we got to establish that, you know, we we don't agree on anything. Yeah, here we are <laughs> talking every day. Yeah. Um, right. All right, so I think we'll wrap it up right there. And uh, we'll, see you next, we'll see you next time whenever we record. I, I don't know. I don't have this planned out ahead of time. So. Uh, any shout-outs <laughs> that anybody wants to do? Yeah, you can go ahead and um, do your shout-outs. As always, check out Apollo mm-hmm. City Comics on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, uh, brought to you by David and Frank and Beans, where there's a bunch of movie content and whatnot, so check that out as well. And, and I co-host on there, awesome. so you guys yes. can go over there and listen to this me is, more. Yeah, more, yeah. Uh, more angry fighting. Uh, Justin, <laughs> shout-outs you want to give? Uh, you know what? Just uh, yeah, on Instagram, at born to be justin I'll spell it out perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, on top of that, uh, let's also remember that as soon as we can all safely gather, hopefully <laughs> us as writers and creators can start working on productions such as uh, Dollars and Donuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, give them a shout out because they want us to work with them. On top of that, hopefully uh, in the near future, we can get some comic stuff going. So. Yes. We awesome. just need to get to the point where they hire us to rewrite the DCEU and do it right. Yeah, there we go. Oh, man. I want control <laughs> of Superman. <laughs> what? Hey. Hey, if you bring a good story to them, they might, they might end up. They might. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Well, thank right, you everybody guys. for listening. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. All right.